What's up guys? Good morning team. Hope y'all are doing well today. It's a beautiful day. It's a Tuesday. I took the trash out today. I did not forget. I actually took the trash out so I'm not gonna have to pause the stream so I can go take the trash out like I always do because I took the trash out today, you know, and I'm and I'm damn proud of myself because I didn't forget. I don't know. Hey, what's up Precise? What's up Yeti? What's up Wretched? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at APTX. I'm looking at ACOR as well. Um, a lot of these are kind of setting up for the moving average crossover. We'll see. Oh, man. Oh, we got AIHS. Popping off this morning too, making some moves, gapping up from 140s to 150s where it's sitting now. Uh, v Ray gapping up. Let me go ahead and build my watch list. I don't even think I've done that today yet. Let me let me fix this. Uh, what do we got. I think that's about it. I don't, there might be more stuff that I haven't seen yet, but I think that's about it. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. There might be some other stuff that I just haven't uh, thrown on there yet. Alright guys, so, so, we got APTX starting to make this move here, we'll see what happens, uh, RWLK, look at this one, this one's popping off just now, last three minutes, look at RWLK, this thing's gapping up from 120s all the way to 213s, almost 100%, it looks like it's about 80-90% gap up here, a big move, we'll see what happens with this one, it's worth watching, um, let's keep an eye on this number $2 level, uh, this $2 level right here, we'll see if it actually holds support there. If we move above that, we can look at like 225s maybe right, right above it. And so we'll watch this range real quick to see what happens in between this range to see if it breaks it or if it fails. But RWLK, guys, I got to add that one to my list. I, I completely missed that one. There we go. All right, let's see if it holds a two. That's the next step. It broke over two. We'll see if it holds there or not. Hey, what's up, my kin? What's up, Roman? What's up, B? Lemon X, let's see. All right, so it's holding over two. All right, there's the push up. We'll see if it breaks this high and hits 250. But yeah, RWLK, the latest one making a move. Let me see if I can find a catalyst for this. Um, this is Rewalk Robotics, and they received Medicare provider certification. That's the news for RWLK. 
Yeah, so they were authorized as a Medicare provider. Um, they are a manufacturer of robotic medical devices for individuals with lower limb disabilities, and they announced that the Center for Medicare and Medicare Services, Medicare and Medicaid Services, authorized them as a Medicare provider. With this certification, the company can now bill Medicare directly for the procure, uh, procurement. Uh, I don't know why I couldn't say that. Procurement of its Rewalk Personal Ecoskeleton for Medicare beneficiaries and is now listed in the Medicare.gov supplier directory for RWLK. We'll see what happens here. Um, it's still in that range I talked about. You know, recent range that we can watch is this. Uh, we'll see if it breaks that. You know, it's kind of struggling. It's it's consolidating in that area real quick. We'll see what happens with RWLK. Um, Another one, APTX, gap it up here. This was really one of the first ones that I was watching today. Uh, we're looking at $7, uh, $7.50 as a little range there, $8 above us. Underneath this, we got like six fifties and six. Uh, so we'll see what happens to these, you know, four or five areas. Um, we'll watch those to see if they break. I think those are the most significant. Uh, we could always watch this one too, but we'll see if it actually gets there in any recent time. Uh, for aptx we'll look up the catalyst for this one to see if it has a catalyst explaining this move here ah i do need to do hotkeys today that is what i need to do Hey John, your stream keeps pausing and restarting. It has done it for weeks. Has anyone else noticed this? Wi-Fi or cell data does the same thing. Are we getting that on anybody? All right, good. Yeah, I don't. It's probably that probably has to do with your own latency, um, Onyx. It probably has to do with your own stuff, brother. Uh, I'm not. I'm, I can't be for sure, but I'm pretty sure it's probably on your end. Just because I watched the stream on my side too, just to make sure it runs smooth and, you know, we're good on my end. It doesn't stop. It doesn't pause. We're good. Um, all right, we got APTX. This one's higher after the company reported phase two clinical uh, uh, phase two clinical data evaluating the NYX783 in post-traumatic stress disorder. It showed significant and statistically uh, significant improvement and clinically meaning meaningful efficacy results and the company expects to initiate a pivotal study in 2021. Yeah, if the stream is blurry or keeps refresh or keeps doing that stuff, just refresh it at the top. Just refresh that. It'll it'll be better. You know, it should be better if you do that. Hey, well, welcome. Hey, yo, welcome, man. Yeah, it should be a fun week. But yeah, that's the news for APTX. We're watching these levels here. Uh, ACOR with the gap up from 69 cents to about 120 for ACOR. Uh, this one's up. It's a quarter therapeutics and shares are trading higher after the company announced it has been entitled to receive a $15 million milestone payment from Biogen. And so a 15 mil milestone payment for this one. We'll see what happens. This is a quarter therapeutics. Uh... We got one dollar obviously is a big level here it looks like the floats fairly large for this what's the flow yeah the float is 47 million not not an incredibly large float but a big enough to watch and understand that the float is not like a simple small float stock a uh, smaller range here um we got some levels that we can keep an eye on that's really what we're watching these four or five levels here for acor um we already went over rwlk and we are pulling back some for this one now for RWLK, we'll see if it holds at $2 uh, for RWLK, which is Rewalk by uh, Robiotics. CBLI looks good. Gap it up from 217 all the way to 350s for CBLI here. This is Cleveland Bio Labs, and they are um, they are going to combine businesses with Cytocom in an all-stock transaction. Uh, the Cytocom entity, entity will continue to be listed on the NASDAQ and with, uh, with Cleveland Biolabs, which is CBLI, and Cytocom being combined, the company board will consist of four members selected by Cytocom and three members selected by CBLI or Cleveland Bio. 
Yeah, so that's the news for CBLI. We'll watch this one. Uh, you know, we got a big level at like 350, I think is the big support level for this one, like right around 350. Uh, $4 is obviously interesting. 420, everybody's favorite number up there, has a little bit of resistance. We got 440, and then above us, we should watch for a break, but you know, possible resistance at 450 for CBLI. So we'll see, keep an eye on this one for CBLI. We'll watch to see what happens there. We'll come back to it. ITRM gapping up from 85 cents to 111 here for ITRM. Hey, what's up, AG? What's up, MYO? What's up, brother? Yeah, statistically significant. Um, John, good morning. Love the show. My wife loves your show. After watching it once, she uh, she subscribed. Hey, that's cool, man. I appreciate that. Hey, welcome, team. Um, Corsair, CRSR, put Riot on the list. Riot is, it used to be crypto, now I don't know what it is. Um, yeah, it looks alright, I mean, not that much volume. We got UXIN. Yeah, I can't type this morning. Yeah, UXIN gapping up from 119s to 140s. Uh, communication stock. Um, this popped off yesterday. Heavy volume, not seeing any news to justify UXIN's move. So, uh, <clears throat> pump and dump. Uh, but who knows what this one's doing um, for UXIN. Uh, we'll come back to that. Uh, we got RCON. Um, RCON gapping up from 118 to 144 for RCON here. We'll watch this one too. This one is Recon Technologies. No catalyst here. Another communication stock. So mostly communication sector is having a lot of sympathy it looks like today. Uh, AIHS. AIHS had a huge move in the last 20 minutes or so for AIHS. Um, so this is Sinmeo Technologies announcing signing off framework agreement with BYD to purchase and jointly promote electric vehicles for ride sharing. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens here. They are signing off in a framework agreement with BYD, which is another company. Um, to purchase and you know co-promote electric vehicles for ride sharing uh, so we'll see what happens here um, for AIHS that news came out and it looks bullish a lot of volume coming in this one has a ton of volume the uh, the float of this one's only 29 million too so it's relatively small uh, recent move we got Corsair here which I do have some Corsair headphones uh, you guys remember me wearing these um, you know these were my gaming headsets that I wore whenever my mic died before I bought a replacement mic. Here's a fun fact here. So, I plugged in this mic yesterday because, honestly, for some reason, this current mic sucks with editing. Like, the, the it, there's an echo with this mic right here. So, with this mic, there's an echo. This mic was like over $100, right? With that mic, there's an echo. And the reason I got a new mic was because this one was screwing up and it was too low. But I plugged it back in, even though I did this multiple times before I bought this new mic. And now this one works perfectly. I actually made the last video with my normal mic that I've been using for over a year now. And so now I just got a bunch of mics. I'm not using barely any of them except for one. And it's just, it's dumb, you know. It's just dumb. Now I, I spent a bunch of money on a bunch of unnecessary stuff here, you know. Everybody make fun of me for that. Cause I deserve it, I guess. Uh, but yeah, C C R S R gap it up here, Corsair. Um, Corsair Gaming, oh, they are up. Price target of twenty five. Um, just initiated coverage on them. Outperform rating. I don't see any other news. Credit Suisse. I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. Let me see. What was the original original news that caused this one to push? Aside from Bayard Barclays, uh, when was how new was this stock? Okay, it's fairly new, but it's not like super new. I mean, I, this thing's been out since uh, you know 
September. So about a month old, so I guess uh, some firms taking coverage on Corsairs, making people interested. We'll see what happens. Uh, we got ITRM here. Uh, ITRM gapping up some. I don't know if I went over this one yet, but we'll go over it again. Uh, Interim Therapeutics, they're reporting um, some stuff, and they're going to present data from the Phase 3 trials and uncomplicated and complicated urinary tract infections. Uh, so yeah, they're going to present some data for some UTI infection um, studies and results, I guess. Uh, so we'll see what happens with this one. Uh, what's the float? Float is 13 million, so not a not a big float at all. Uh, so worth watching. We'll watch one dollar, 125 up here maybe. You know, I think this 120 resistance pretty strong, and then up here at 150 looks good. I think I'll keep that there. Uh, what else we got, guys? Am I missing anything else? We got CBLI, Cleveland Bio. We went over that. Uh, TC, um, B Ray. We got SGBX. I think is one that we can watch. SGBX. Uh, it's falling down now, but this just means it's setting up for the crossover. All right, this is SG Blocks, and they are higher after the company announced three new development projects to be undertaken at its SG Echo modular container manufacturing facility. And these projects are expected to generate approximately $1.7 million in revenue. And so we'll see what happens here. I mean, it's not a huge amount of money relative to like what some other companies do, but uh, yeah, it's worth a watch here. What's the float? The float is 7 million, 8 million actually. Uh, 7.9 million to be exact, uh, and so we'll watch it. It's it's small enough float to you know keep an eye on, for sure. Uh, let me know right now what your favorite stock is in the chat. What are you looking at this morning, team? Let me know. Um. Oh yeah, oh yeah, AG. If you if you think I'm not writing all these microphones off, bro, you're crazy, bro. I'm about to write all this stuff off. The one of the main benefits of owning your own business is you get to write stuff off, right? All of this stuff's getting written off, you know. And uh, yeah, it is what it is. I mean, uh, hey, it's uh, it, it, I'm obviously using it as a business uh, expense because it is one, you know. Yeah, everybody hit that like button. Do it now. You know you want to. Cool kids are doing it. Popular kids. Everybody's doing it. Just try it one time. Hit the like button. You know you want to. Do it now. Um. Yeah, man. You see that, Emmanuel? You see that, bro? Like, I'm just wasting money over here, dude. You know. Uh. Hey, I appreciate that, Sine. Thank you. I can write my haircuts off. Yeah, hey, bro, I probably can, Levi. You know, like like Carol's cutting my hair. I can just pay her, you know. Thousand dollar haircut, you know. She's snooty with her haircuts, you know. And so, thousand dollars a haircut, you know, great idea. No, I'm never doing that. <laughs> uh, but I could, I'm, you know, I might be able to write like 20 bucks off each, you know. One thing you'll learn is that, that write-offs add up, man. You gotta just, you know, you gotta be smart about your expenses in a business and like for me for me it's a uh, like I just own an LLC you know it's just a limited liability corporation and so uh, yeah I mean it's fun but I get to write stuff off you know do you think Acor is gonna bounce back to be honest I have no idea what any of these stocks are gonna do do I think they're gonna bounce back? It's plausible, but I, you know, you never really know. I mean, with a lot of these companies, most of the time I'm not trying to predict because I think most of these are gonna fail, right? Like we did a back testing video on gapping penny stocks like this, and like we we back tested the amount of times that they gap up like this and then actually break this pre market high up here, like how many times they actually reverse from you know this drop and and are strong enough to break the pre market high, and like it was like. A quarter of them did like less than it was like 20 it was like 28 percent maybe 27 percent of stocks that gap up like this ever break the pre-market high so you know 
three out of four of them fail, basically, you know. Uh, and it is what it is. And so with that said, I don't know what, you know, I don't know if it, I don't, there's a few things you can take from that. Number one is that a long-term dip buy is probably not the right move for me, you know, because most of them are going to fail. The other one is that uh, when they do actually break the pre-market high, on average, they're just a lot stronger. Uh, yeah, and so while most of them might fail to actually break the pre-market high, the stocks that are actually strong enough to do it end up being much stronger stocks on average sure there's a lot of stocks that fail after they break the pre-market high but i think a smart way to do it is like if you look for a percentage break of the pre-market high like stocks that stocks that break the pre-market high a certain percentage above it those are ones that you should really watch and, and can be money machines i think uh but you just got to figure those out um but yeah itrm uxin rcon uh aptx CBLI. Yeah, I still got to get hot. Somebody, the reason I haven't gotten hot key set up yet is because somebody told me uh, like a tool that I can use. Hey, I appreciate the sub, Edward. Thank you, man. Welcome. Appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, somebody told me that I can change the settings in Thinkorswim to avoid that. Let me find that comment. Where'd it go? Somebody told me. Somebody somebody literally made me a comment. They were like, hey, just do this instead. I gotta find it now. Did I miss it? Honestly, it's surprising how many haters we get in the in the in the uh, comment section. You know? Just surprising, to be honest. Um let me find this. Where'd it go, man? Did they delete it? They didn't delete their comment, huh? Maybe they put us... Where did they post this, man? I, I literally saw it. Uh, it's got to be on this stream. Comments. I hope I didn't accidentally delete it. Oh, wait. Comments I haven't responded to. What happened to it, man? I mean, I gotta find... Where's my phone? Somebody left me a comment, and they were like, Hey, if you want to fix that on Thinkorswim, just do this. Now I lost it, man. What happened? I, didn't, I hope I didn't accidentally delete it. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you're gonna promote your own channel without asking me, you're just gonna get a. You're just gonna get banned, and almost all streamers are going to frown upon that like if you try to spam your content without asking on somebody's stream they're just going to ban you you're never going to get the chance to like say anything on that stream again and so just giving you some advice i put you in timeout i didn't ban you because i'm trying to give you a chance here but don't spam your own content without asking it's all love man i'm not mad at you you know i think y'all will find if you ask me i'll be very nice about it and we usually allow you to promote your own content as long as it's something i agree with but if you do it without asking, you're just going to get banned. Uh, just to say that real quick. Jacob Pierce. Why did he delete his comment, man? He said... Uh, hold on. No. 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 What happened to it? He told me how to do it, and then he deleted his comment. Why? Okay, he said, he said, hey, John, I believe if you go to setup active trader, you can turn off that click off the screen requirement by hitting auto send AT orders on down click. Hope this helps. All right, let's try it. So you go to setup. Active trader. See, we already have that though, man. You know what I mean? Uh, see, we already have this, though. See, this is this. We already have it. Man, I got excited for a second. Um... 
Jeff Bridges has cancer? Uh, no. Does he really? Lymphoma. Oh man, that's a rough uh, skin cancer, man. Lymphoma, you know, that's a killer too. You gotta be careful with that, that's a skin cancer. My dad had a little bit of lymphoma on his nose. They had to do a biopsy and you know scrape it off. Uh, that's rough, man. All right, uh, let me see. Any insight on SPWR? Uh, solar sector, not really moving too much today. Um, you know, big move yesterday. I would watch this 1750 level previous closing price area right there. This is what makes the most sense, I think. Um, AIHS. Did my kids leave without giving me a hug? Right, for sure, tactical. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, right. Like, he asked me, I'll do it. Oh, lymphoma is not skin cancer. Maybe it's myeloma. Maybe that's it, right? Lymphoma is lymph node cancer. I don't know why I thought it was, uh, 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 I don't know why I thought it was skin cancer. I think I was thinking of myeloma, but lymphoma, just based off of the name, is lymph node, cancer of the lymph nodes, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, lymphatic cancer, right, yeah. I don't know why I thought it was skin cancer. It's, uh, I think I, I was thinking of myeloma, which is skin cancer. Hey, what's up, Reborn? Melanoma. Yeah. Man. Yeah, you can tell I don't know my cancers. You know? <laughs> uh, AIHS is like one of my favorite ones here. We're watching it. 175 is usually like a major support level, so we're keeping an eye on that. We got $2 here. Um, 150 down here. Previous closing price. So I'm watching AIHS here. We'll see. Uh, as for like the overall stock market, here's the SPY itself. Uh... And so we'll see what happens. There's the SPY, the SPY here. RWLK just faded down, just never rebounded here, never held. We're sitting at 179 here. We can still watch 175 right there, though. Hey, I appreciate the sub, Juan. Welcome, man. Appreciate the love, bro. Welcome, dude. ITP halted three times yesterday. Uh... Yeah, it looks good. Um, ACOR. Yeah, after yesterday's stream, guys, I did want to say this, too. All right, because, like, for some reason, like, you know, when I heard about this, I heard about this on another YouTube channel that I like called Joshua Fluke, right? Y'all go check out Joshua Fluke's channel. But he talked about, like, the evolution of, like, haters in your stream, right, and, or on your YouTube channel, and he, he says that you'll have some people that genuinely support you, and you can tell who those people are, like the people that like genuinely support you regardless, right, and then you got other people that kind of pretend to support you, but like really the only thing they ever say is negative stuff, right, so it's never like, they're never actually supportive, they're just kind of waiting to criticize you, right, and yesterday, people criticizing me because I was frustrated was honestly a little bit enlightening because it's like look if you're gonna get mad at somebody for being frustrated it's just gonna make them more frustrated and so the reason i'm saying this is because if i get frustrated on stream listen i'm trading in front of hundreds of people live all right i'm trading in front of hundreds of people so naturally streaming every day like i do i'm gonna get frustrated sometimes i'm gonna get aggravated i'm gonna get frustrated i'm gonna you know get mad sometimes and that's inevitable like there's nothing i can really do to stop that the best traders in the world are going to be like that as well and i'm not saying i'm one of the best traders in the world but just to preface the rest of these streams i'm gonna get frustrated sometimes i'm gonna get aggravated right don't get mad at me don't get frustrated with me getting frustrated you know that makes no sense and it makes you seem like a hater you know just to put that into perspective i love you all i'm not gonna harp on this but i'm just saying this for future reference okay I'm gonna get frustrated sometimes. Nothing, it's inevitable. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm human. 
you know? Don't get mad at me for being frustrated. You know what that's gonna do? That's gonna make me more frustrated, you know? Very, should be self-evident thing here. Now, with all that said, I'm gonna move back to stocks, but I did wanna take a second to say that. Uh, yeah, so my main watches are actually right here. I'm a weatherman real quick. This is my main watches, you know? This is my main watches. You can see RWLK looking good. My, my main watch is really like, if I had to look at him, AIHS is probably my favorite now. Recently popping up with the scanner that we got CBLI. And this one looks good. It's holding its gains and it's got a very small float of 5.6 million. So this is one of my favorites. It just depends on how it sets up, to be honest. Um, we got the moving average crossover set up here. We'll watch this one as well. Uh, sorry, I'm, let me post this links real quick. But yeah, it's just weird to me how you got, like, people that are, like, waiting for me to screw up just to criticize me. Like, come on now, man. Like, I'm green every day. Yeah, James, 100%, man. Yeah, I already did that though, Levi. It didn't work, bro. I did. I already have it checked. Is really what it is. Like I've already got it checked. I mean, I guess I can't expect anything better. I mean, it is YouTube. Let's be honest. I mean, it is YouTube here, you know. But it's just kind of like, come on, man. Like, obviously, I'm frustrated sometimes. Uh, let me see. All right. All right, team. How do you donate? Hey, bro, if you want to donate, just hit that money sign underneath the chat, brother. You don't have to donate, though. If you if you feel like it in the kindness of your heart, go ahead. But don't feel obligated to, obviously, man. Um, it's up to you. But, um, yeah, I mean, you hit the money sign underneath the uh, chat if you want to donate. Um, RWLK tanks down here. ITRM. Uh, AIHS, UXIN. Uh, I like UXIN too. It's kind of setting up for the crossover, and the key here is that it's extended enough away from the VWAP to look interesting to me. Like this extension away from the VWAP, uh, away from the VWAP makes it look good. And if we get the crossover at the open, I'm probably attack it. Uh, one thing I've been noticing for the crossover, the like what works the best, is just looking for stocks that are just super extended away from the VWAP. Like those are the ones that are usually going to do me the best. Uh, ACOR is another example. Like this one's extended away from the VWAP, so it's it's not extended on the upside, which is better for the crossover, obviously, and uh, the reversal crossover. So we'll watch that. ITRM, kind of same thing here. We'll keep an eye on this too. So we got a few that we're really looking at this morning. Uh, my full list is like ITRM, ACOR, RCON, UXIN, SGBX, ATIF, CBLI, AIHS is really about it. Uh, we'll probably watch like uh, Corsair, CRSR as well. But uh, yeah, that's mostly what I'm watching today. Um, ATIF is another one that's really extended, but hey, it's worth a watch as well here. Um, we'll keep an eye on this too. Oh, uh, oh wait, man, I forgot, man, wasn't, what's his name supposed to come on stream today? Uh,
Yeah, yesterday I fell asleep at like 7 o'clock. <laughs> and like I woke up this morning. I really, I, I fell asleep yesterday at like 7 o'clock. And, uh, hey, my brother, man. Thank you, Reborn. I appreciate the, the $2 donation, man. Thank you, sir. Really do appreciate it, man. Thank you, man. Welcome to the channel, bro. And I appreciate the support off the bat, man. Thank you, bro. Um, Yeah, we'll watch it and see. Yeah, we're watching ATIF here too. Hey, but yeah, thank you, Reborn. I appreciate the love, bro. Alright guys, so what else what else are we watching today? I could look at the spy itself. I wonder if my my futures trading results showed up yet. Like I tried to look at my trading results and I was green in futures yesterday, but every time I checked it, it said I was like it said I was like red, but all the trades weren't showing up. It just showed my first like 15 trades. Or my first like three trades, five trades. Uh let me see if I can find it. It was yesterday on the 19th. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's th these are my actual results here. Uh just to show you guys, like, look, you can see now it's actually working here. So, like, in futures yesterday, oh, wait, how do I do this, man? Uh, chat. Uh, how do I look at this? That was dumb. Uh, alerts, trading, add, search. I don't have to do this. Why? There we go. All right, so look, I'm gonna go to the 19th, which was yesterday. This was my actual results. Oh wait, uh, there we go. That was my actual results from futures yesterday. See, even this is still messed up. It says my total loss was $225. It's not accurate. Uh, and this is in the futures combine. And so, uh, yeah, this is my actual P&L. I ran it. I ran it 70% accuracy. Um, but yeah, this is actually wrong. Oh, there it is. Okay, no, this is actually right. Okay, so yeah, profit trades 387, losing trades 225 at the bottom here, and then gross P&L was 162. Uh, so yeah, not too bad. Made a little bit over 100 bucks in my little futures combine account. It's just a challenge account. That's why it says demo at the top. But uh, this is obviously a real account right here. Uh, so the SPY itself is up. So the market itself is up. We'll, we'll go over the market news real quick. Um, I'm gonna read this. This is from the ETF preview from MT Newswires, and it says, "Quote: Stock futures were pointing to a higher open. Uh, stock futures were pointing to a higher open following media reports that House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin have narrowed differences on a fiscal stimulus package. Investors are also digesting mixed earnings results from companies such as IBM, Procter and Gamble, Philip Morris, and Lockheed Martin. And in economic data news, the September national housing so, uh, starts showed an annual rate of 1.415 million versus expectations for 1.463 million and compared with the prior rate of 1.416 million permits came in at 1.553 million just above the consensus of 1.52 and compared with the prior rate of 1.47 million among Fed Reserve officials Vice Chairman Randall Quarles is going to be speaking at 10:30 or at 10:50 Eastern Chicago Fed President Charles Evans is going to be speaking at 1 p.m. Eastern. And government, uh, Governor Lael Brannard is going to be speaking at 3 p.m. Eastern. And Atlanta Fed Ra uh, President Rafael Bostic is going to be speaking at 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, IBM reported third quarter earnings per share of 258 in line with analyst estimates. Uh, UBS reported third quarter results of, uh, let me see. Of 56 cents per diluted share with 28 cents in the same quarter a year earlier, so better than last year. Uh, Dow Jones Energy Fund inactive. 
Panhandle Oil and Gas filed a registration statement covering potential sale of up to $75 million of its securities. Uh, crude oil is up negligible here. The U.S. oil fund is up 0.6%. Natural gas is up around 4%. Uh, the U.S. natural gas fund is 1% up. Gold is down 0.3%. The Spider Gold Trust is up 0.2%. Silver is down 0.3%. The iShare Silver Trust is up a little bit over 1%. That is the market news today, guys. The SPY is up. We'll keep an eye on the market itself here. Um, as for penny stocks specifically, AIHS is one of my favorites if we can get it to load here. CBLI is another one. Uh, AIHS and CBLI look the strongest so far in pre-market here. You can see AIHS starting to test that $2 whole dollar level that I drew out. We'll see if we end up actually breaking that spot. Um, again, we're also keeping an eye on a few other ones here. AIHS. CBLI looking strong here as well sitting just at 412 we do have a, a nice little range to look at and follow here to see if we break this range right around this here so we'll see if we can actually break that range there we're testing the top of it now and we'll keep an eye on that up to the pre-market high at the 440s and the half dollar level right above that at 450 I think is going to have some sway uh, over that stock's movement ultimately here um we also have APTX, ACOR. Here's APTX dropping down under six. Uh, ACOR hovering right around 115. UXIN is another one I'm keeping an eye on, sitting right at 145. Now we'll watch this one float up 216 million, so a fairly large float for UXIN. And yeah, that's basically what we're looking at today. We got GTEC, which is making a big move, maybe fighting back some after a put. Uh, excuse me after a push right uh, right before the close yesterday we had a pretty big run up here in this stock uh although it did fail after pre-market actually started so we'll watch gtcec or gtec to see if anything interesting happens um but yeah rwlk and that's basically what we're watching today well we got a lot of dips for the crossover so we'll keep an eye on that at the opening bell here um I really need to get hotkeys set up, but I haven't yet. I'm slacking on that. Hey, what's up, Wretched? Hey, no, you're good, man. Yeah, y'all are good, bro. Uh... Forgot I have morning appointments. Hey, later, man. Have a good day, bro. What's up, Sarah? Uh, what's up, Wretched? David? Yeah, no stress. Hey, nice, David. Hey, I appreciate it. Yeah, if, like I said, y'all want to check out uh, whatever, any of this stuff, let me know. Um, but yeah, let me know what your favorite stock is right now. We got a decent amount of stuff to keep an eye on this morning for sure. Yeah, 15 minutes. Why not do it now? Do what? Do what? Uh, we'll see what we get. Yeah. Also, guys, real quick, just a second. Let's try to get over 100 likes before the opening bell. We've got 67 right now. Let's just everybody hit that like button. Show your support for the team here. Uh, if I'm missing anything, let me know. I don't think I am. I mean, we got EMKR, SGBX that we can keep an eye on. Um, PPSI, you know, making a little bit of moves here. PE, uh, Riot, MARA. Um, but yeah, nothing too crazy aside from the ones I've already looked at. V-Ray. C-A-R-A. -A. But that's mostly it. 
CBL out trying to make this move. We're at 420 now. Everybody's favorite number. Yeah, hit that like button. You know you want to. Huh. Oh, man, Sam. Hey, bro. Sam, everybody give a... Send happy thoughts to Sam, man. He said he dislocated his elbow. He's got to trade with one hand today. Hey, bro, I hope you get that fixed, man. <laughs> Sorry to hear that, bro. Um... LLY? Hey, sorry. LLY? Uh, I mean, downward trend yesterday, not that, it's not really my style. Most of the time I'm looking for like pre-market action to trade. And this one just doesn't have any. So it's not really my style. I would have to look at the daily chart if I'm interested in this. Uh, we are at 143s right now. So I do think this is like a big support level. And so if it gets down like specifically under 140, you know, I think it looks really weak. But if it holds over like I don't know this level here at 146 it looks okay but uh, again it's not really my style to trade uh, a lot of these ITRM um, we got some interesting levels to watch here as well so we got some stuff to keep an eye on for sure with the crossover play uh, CBLI and um, APTX were the two that or no CBLI and ITRM what was it CBLI it was CBLI and something else RWLK maybe no AIHS, yeah, it was CBI or CBLI and AIHS were the two that I liked the most. Um, I use a little bit of both. Lazy. I don't recommend most people use market orders, but sometimes I'll find myself in that situation. Uh, I think I, I just need to use limit orders though. And I think that's one of the ways that I fix it, is I, I, I try to sell on... Uh, is there a way to just do it at the last price? Let me see, I could... Yeah, I'll just keep it like this. I think I just have to remember to press enter after every single trade. So it's like, if I get myself into the habit of doing that, I think I'll be all right. Uh, MOXC. Uh, looking all right. LOGI, Logitech. Looking okay here if you like these big stocks. Uh, UXIN. So yeah, we got a bunch of stuff to keep an eye on for sure. Hey, yeah, no worries. Hey, we need six likes, guys. Six little baby likes. Hit that like button. You know you want to. Uh, HRTZ. Or you mean HTZ. I'm just assuming you mean HTZ, right? Um, all right, so looking at these, I'm looking for extended stocks away from the VWAP. Honestly, RWLK looks like one of my favorites. Small float, extension away from the VWAP, crossover setting up. We got the 26 uh, we got the 26 SMA above the 12 EMA, which is really what we look for. So this one is setting up for the possible crossover. You can even see, shout out to uh, the person that made this script. You can see the crossover alert show up here. And so we're watching RWLK for the crossover, especially uh, maybe ITRM if it sets up and we get some drops at the open. APTX is kind of the same thing. We got the 26 SMA above the 12 EMA and it's extended away from the VWAP. And so we're watching for this one too. Um, and so yeah, AIHS is uh, a strong one as well, but this one is above the VWAP. And uh, you know, for that, it's not my favorite. LQDA, SGBX is another one that we'll watch here. If this one dips and we get some crossovers here, we will attack this one. Got some extension away from the VWAP as well. Oh, all right. All right, yeah, we're going to have Eric here today, team. Let's do this. This song goes hard too. Question, do you watch other people's stream just to see how they do it? 
know. Uh, I mean, I think there's two types of people that stream. There's there's trade idea scanners, which people that just tr stream trade idea scanners, and if they don't put out any other content, that type of channel is just it's not gonna it's not gonna give people it's not gonna have longevity in the streaming game, um, just because that is gonna be you know difficult to keep up with. Uh, and then there's other people like me that trade most of the time. Um, yeah, everybody's a little bit different. CBLI, top low float stock this morning. Uh, is, that a, is that a plug float checker? I'll allow it, but you know, yeah. CBLI is what, I'm, it's just not really my strategy, so to speak. Um, but I don't hate it, you know. Alright, so we got Eric in here. Let me tweak the sound settings. Yo, what's up, man? You there? Okay, here, hold on. I can barely hear you. Let me turn down my music real quick. Alright. Oh, yeah. Uh, Yeti microphone, headset. Good. Cool. All right, guys, can you all hear Eric? Let's do a sound check, team. All right, testing, testing. I'll turn on your stream so I can hear. Hey, it's always bro. so quiet when I join. I know, man, but oh, I, <laughs> I had to turn down the music. Usually, uh... Hey, no, I appreciate that, Zanos. Yeah, man, I mean, uh, here's the thing, right, Zanos? A lot of those other streamers they don't really do anything, man. You know what I mean? Like, not, no offense to them. Not I, I know Eric streams sometimes. And My he, audio's you know. like a little bit, uh, whenever I listen through your stream, it's always like a little bit more like compressed sounding than it is on my end whenever I do my videos and stuff. But it might just be Zoom that does that. It's a bit unfortunate because the audio quality isn't as great, but in the end, they're able to at least hear what, uh, what I'm saying. Really, man, that's weird. Let me see. Try. Yeah, I, I suspect it's it, it could just be because of Zoom, but I'm not 100% sure. So, do your headphones have a mic in them? No, I'm using uh I'm using my my Yeti microphone. Okay. Yeah, it's um, going through my Yeti. It's going through. It's my usually mouth. that's what it is. Let me make sure. It could also be my head my sound specifically. Let me try to check it real quick. I mean, it's uh, not a big deal. I think it's been like that other times I've been on too. Uh, okay. But it's as I just noticed because the quality of the like audio has always right. been like significantly worse than it is in my videos. Right. Here, let me see. All right, here I'm gonna mute myself real quick. And, well, here I can't see. I don't ever get service where I am. I'm in like the one part of my house that doesn't get service, so it's hard for me to even. Let me try real quick. Aside from that, though, can y'all hear Eric? It looked like uh, I was seeing some yeses in chat. <laughs> Wretched man. Uh, yeah, it looks like we're. It does look like we're good. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. All right. So what's up, man? How was yesterday, bro? How'd you do yesterday? You did well. Uh. Right? So actually, yesterday was really good. I finished the day with a hundred and ten dollars and ninety cents profit. Nice. Um. I woke up that morning and I felt like I got a little bit over. Uh. I, don't, I think zealous is the word. Overzealous. Yeah. Um. My first trade of the day was out of the halt on M N or was it M N or M C M N N C N. You know. You know the stuff. N N N N D M. Or something. No, like it wasn't that, right? DM. It wasn't DM. It wasn't DM. Uh, uh, I don't remember what it was, but it was a stock that halted on the first one minute candle out of open, and it... uh, after the halt ended. It um can't, it like exploded up. It had like a nice pullback, and I entered on that pullback, and then I got completely flushed on, and uh, I ended up losing uh like a hundred and fifty something dollars on that trade, um, and I ended up being down a hundred and eighty uh, in the first twelve minutes of the day, and then I just slowly dug myself out and started being less risky and more sticking to my principles. But the reason why I took that trade, even though I knew it was risky, is because I'm trying to get to that next stage. Right. where instead of doing 
a hundred to two hundred dollars a day, I can get up to five hundred dollars a day because that's like the next step for me. Right. Just doing five hundred a day. So I was really pushing for that, and I, um, you know, I fell short. But at the end of the day, even when I have a bad morning, as long as stocks are still moving, I know I can dig myself out of that hole. So I'm not too concerned. That right. video is going to be up on my channel today. Like, if I know, I don't know if you keep up with that stuff, but yeah, you'll be able to see that trade where I lost. Uh, 150 bucks because i was not happy i almost like thought to myself like should i just end here and just like take the red day and then i was like hell no i'm not <sighs> taking the red day i'm eric chipotle green right yeah you know you gotta eric do it chipotle for green. for yeah. chipotle you know yeah, yeah for the chipotle <laughs> now so you're I'm talking about going to get chipotle today if i do well Dude, honestly, I was just brought upon Chipotle in the last six months, but I've been eating. I ate it like 20 times in the last six months now. In my room right now, I have four bags and I took out my trash last week. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're talking about CCNC, right? That, that CCNC, was the stock. Yeah. Had, yeah. had to be. I, I saw that. It Somebody's chat room had to be trading this. I'm not, I'm not attacking any chat room specifically, but this is almost certainly like this is big size getting unloaded at the top. Yeah. It was um, CCNC is what it was, yeah. yeah. I didn't yeah. remember the exact ticker because I kept on saying it wrong yesterday too. Yeah. I don't know what's up with that ticker, but I just struggle with um, saying it. Yeah, it's. Uh, I got caught in a move like this last week on Wednesday, or no, not last week, the week before last on Wednesday. That was actually the last time I ended red on in penny stocks. Was but yeah. But yeah. this was the type of move too, and and I started to avoid these moves. But yeah, man, these these are frustrating, super frustrating. I ended up doing um, $250 on KXIM, and nice. that was why I was like green on the day. I just traded a lot of KXIM. Yeah, yeah, that one, I traded, I, that was the only stock I traded yesterday, and I had a, I had a, you saw me with Thinkorswim, man, just a frustrating day with things. Yeah, I went back and watched Ugh. the stream, and I was just kind of like skipping through and stuff, like picking out like stuff here and there. I watched yeah. probably like 40 minutes of your stream yesterday. Yeah, man. And, uh, it was kind of funny watching the execution because <laughs> yeah. you kept on getting so frustrated. It happened every <laughs> single trade you took, you were having the error. Right. And it was, uh, it was, it was my like, fault. It was, yeah, it was. I mean, it, <laughs> it's poor design. I'll agree with that. I'll give For you that sure. much. I don't think it's clever that they make you like do that. But um, I understand why they do. It's right? So that you don't accidentally type in like 5,000 shares. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which I've done yeah. before. I've right. done that before. There was one time I meant to take like a. Uh, this was like back whenever I first topped into my live account and I transferred away from paper. I, I went and took a 200 share position and accidentally took a 2000 share position. So on a trade that I would have made $20, $20 normally, I made $200 in like half a second. And I'm not gonna lie, to this day, that is still like the best feeling trade I've ever had because it was just like, bam, $200 when I was only expecting to make 20. Oh, you gotta love it. Doesn't get better than that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, team, we got two minutes. Let's do this. I'm what do we got? I'm C, uh, CBLI right now. Yeah, CBLI is definitely the strongest looking one. Uh, I'm looking for the crossover, so I'm looking for a little bit more dips. So I'm watching, uh, most of my watch list is like AIHS is a little bit of one, but mostly it's ITRM. Um, UXIN though, guys, UXIN is one that has been climbing up big in the last five minutes. This one just ripped up, uh, you know, 25 cents or so in the last five minutes, getting a lot of volume come in, over 300,000 shares traded in the last minute. Um, so look at UXIN, guys. This is one that's starting to really climb up here. Uh, I'm looking at like- I think CBL uh, is gonna be a huge, huge stock today. I would definitely yeah. keep an eye on it. I just looked at the daily chart and there's a daily resistance at 443 and a daily resistance at five so if we see a break at four it's like very uh where it's it might even happen now holy crap it might actually break uh yeah there we go that's a new high damn didn't even pay any uh notice to 43. yeah man that's definitely the... gonna be i take small size though i'm gonna be sure. certainly small uh scaling down on this because ordinarily i might take like 600 shares for a two thousand four hundred dollar position but I think right. that the stock is going to be moving like 50 cents immediately out of market open. So right. 50 cents on uh, 600 shares is 300 bucks and I'm not comfortable losing $300. Right. All right. Here's the bell team. Oh, there we go. All right. So yeah, there it goes. 
There Eric, he goes. Uh, it's going yep. all the way up to five. Ooh, four eighties. Four eighties. So CBLI, guys. CBLI. Uh, I was going to say, I'm not going to make the same mistake I did yesterday. Today is all about not doing that, even if it's a losing day. Uh, yeah. That's the only thing I care about is just not making that same dumb mistake again. You know, ACOR showing up on the scanners, though. ACOR. Uh, because I got here so late after getting my coffee, I don't have anything else on the watch. All I have is CBLI, but... Uh, uh, you know, the stock is definitely one to watch, so oh, for it's sure. not that, the worst thing in the world to... Ooh, look, long. there it is again, guys. Same I tried thing. to buy 11, I missed it. Now I'm not gonna do it. Now I'm waiting a little bit longer. Yeah. These big morning rejections have been happening so often lately. Somebody's just dumping shares at these highs. Uh, I mean, I got a two cent scalp there. Very, very mm -hmm. small. But, you know, I'm just kind of taking it... That like that. This is the next step in my progression for uh, overthrowing Ross as the penny, penny, uh, penny stock king. Yeah. Because that is my goal is to overthrow Ross. Right. Um, I I got to start getting more confident in trading the first one to two minutes, which is why I've been forcing myself to do it. Even though, more often than not, I I do worse trading the first five minutes. Right. Uh, but you know, you have to be willing to trade the first five minutes, in my opinion, to be able to hit these like big numbers, one hundred thousand dollar days, like Ross has been doing a couple times this year. Oh, for sure. All right, guys. So I'm looking at ITRM right now. Um, I'm gonna jump in with like a hundred shares here if it breaks this high at like one ten, and then if we cross over, I'm gonna add some more. All right, hundred shares. Enter. So I pressed enter this time. Um. UXIN though guys if you're looking for a runner look at UXIN that one's starting to rip here it's at 171 UXIN crazy move here so far um CCNC ITRM yeah I'm looking at ITRM that's like my favorite one right now uh yeah we're looking for that red to green move on ITRM ATIF was another one I'm watching, but it just looked weak. Uh, SGBX, nothing quite yet here. ACOR, still trying to make a move here. Um, look like it might pull a little bit of a red to green for uh, ACOR. ISR showing up on the scanners, ISR. Um, nothing yet. Yeah, ACOR looking strong. Oh yeah, I'm gonna import uh, import that um, halt study and see if that works. I'm really interested to see. It could be very like useful if um, I'm able to know for sure where the halts are. So let me see. Oh, yeah. that. Edit studies. Uh, create. Paste. Okay. And apply. All right. Let's see if it works. This is gonna be really cool if it does. Cause think that's like one of the things that Thinkorswim hasn't done that they like totally should do. For sure. Is have uh, a native like halt notifier. Right. All right, I am in ACOR here with just a hundred shears, just a little bit of a move here. It will jump out of this if we really need to. Uh, it's such a small sizing relative to the overall range of this one that we're okay and we're just gonna hold this and see if we get you know a little bit broader of a move here uh, up to like 150s is really the goal you know i was considering either this one or rcon but we've got kind of talked myself into this one CBLI is kind of uh, relaxed a little bit for now. I'm going to try to look and find something else. Oh, I did not want to buy it to pick up again. All right, I'm in with 400 shares of this. This is way too big, but uh, it's all right. Uh, I, I, I did not want this big of sizing, so I'm probably going to have to unload fast. Hands over the cover button, but uh, 400 shares here. We'll see if we get something. Uh, nice squeeze. All right, we just took out half. We're only at 100 shares now, or 200 shares. So I feel a little bit better about the trade. We did catch the squeeze there. Uh, I know somebody gave us a super chat. I really, really appreciate it. I'll get back to that super chat. Um, it once says, uh, good morning. You should keep your eyes on CBLI. Hey, thank you, man. I appreciate the, the super chat. King of calls, brother. king of calls. 
Alright, so we're holding 100 shares left. Still riding this up. Uh, Alright, and we are out. So a little $15 win there. Scalping hey, there it in and out. Uh, first trade of the day. We'll take it. We might miss out on a little bit of profit here. I wanted 150s. We got out at 140 something. So reasonable enough. Made about 10 cents a share, but you know. Uh, we are trying to scale up in size, but we're still sticking to our scalping, so I'll certainly take it. Cheap stock, so didn't use too much of my equity. And, uh, yeah, we'll come back to the other one. Let me catch back up on that super chat now. Hey, King of Calls, man. Thank you, bro. I appreciate oh, that. Oh, Oh, CBLI? No, uh, Acorn. Oh, my gosh, man. Uh, that hurts. <laughs> At a certain point, like, new traders get upset if they get stuck in halts. Experienced traders get happy if they get stuck in upward halts, you know. For yeah, the most sometimes part. it can be really good, but at this point I've stopped doing it because I've been burned so much. I've been burnt like more often than not from halts, and I a lot of times it will gap up. But yeah, uh, after after the trauma I've experienced at this point, I'm just totally okay with uh, losing out on whatever may happen. Potential. Yeah, I mean, I in in it, at this point I'm indifferent about it. Like I made my money. Uh, hey, I appreciate yeah, yeah. all the subs, uh, Ron. Can yeah, for sure. Uh, at this point, uh, I'm okay with that. Um, hey, King of Calls, though, man, thank you for the $5 donation. That's two super chats we've gotten today, so I really appreciate the support and the love, team. Thank you very much, team. Uh, definitely appreciate it. The The important thing is that I didn't um, I didn't botch that trade, you know? <laughs> so definitely an improvement from yesterday. Um, but yeah, and this is a strategy, guys, that is a very universal strategy. You know, the, the red to green move, which is what this is on ACR, is such a universal strategy. Like, I see this I see this happen a ton, not just with penny stocks, but with futures and with mid and high caps as well. Um, man, I appreciate all the love, guys. We're getting a bunch of subs today. Um, so thank you, guys. Welcome. You know, um, we... Joel asked, how is the halt study working for you? And I don't know yet. I'm just testing it now. So we'll see. I Next time I have a halt on a stock that... Um, I'm trading one thing i realized though is it only works on stocks above three dollars above below three dollars it's not accurate it seems rcon rcon one minute pullback ripping up over 150. RCON. oh man look at that go yeah Damn. nice little pullback right before the vwap and before that 150 level um but yeah guys this is what i was gonna say so if we look at uh, what was the stock i traded this morning uh I forgot about it. what it was. Was it? You traded um, a ACOR? Yeah, yeah. ACOR. 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 Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah. So this is a very universal strategy, guys. And what it is is it's a red to green move. So you get initially you get a drop at the opening bell, right? I love the one candle ones. Like the one candle red to green moves are my favorite, where you just have one red candle as a downward candle, and then you know it's just a little bit of consolidation. And then when you get the rip up and the break of that high, that's what I'm jumping into. You can see the volume come in. If you look at the volume at the bottom here, you can see the volume come in right when this candle breaks this previous high right here. And it can just be a really profitable strategy if you scalp it. You know, if you try to hold it long term, you're gonna get faked out sometimes. But if you scalp it, super high percentage play. Uh, you just gotta scalp it though. Um, and it's one of the strategies I talked about in that video I dropped uh, over the weekend. Man, CBLI is such a disappointment. I was really expecting uh, it to be something pretty powerful today and then it just didn't feels bad yeah i guess I i'll have to watch um archon and acor i guess are going to be the two that i'm going to be putting a watch at the, like in the meantime maybe maybe it might come back but yeah, for now archon. it's definitely yeah. for now it's tricky. definitely out of the question yeah archon's moving very well for sure um yeah, I think with CBLI, uh, somebody just unloaded a huge size at that top. And that's what's been happening a lot. Like some some type of big boy trader is uh, messing with CBI, CBLI. And, and so, you know, it's just huge. Look at this wick, right? This wick, just the wick is, is like uh, 40 cents, you know? So just a big wick there. Um, and, and it's one of the reasons like I avoid some of these opening moves like I do just because uh, you just get these huge whips up and down. 
And especially, I think it's a, I think for new traders, I think one of the best things you can do is just limit your trading in that first 10 minutes. You know, once you're experienced, like me and Eric, you know, trading that first five minutes is fine. Um, I still I struggle think, too. Like in the first oh, five sure. minutes, I'm, I still have a difficult time sometimes with it. It's definitely easier for me trading, um, like 10 minutes, like the first 10 minutes to the first right. hour, like that time frame, those right. 50 minutes. Are, That's uh, me too. That's like my yeah. style too. And you and I have a similar strategy to a certain extent, especially with like, like one of the strategies that I, I even talked about in that video this weekend was, uh, it was very similar to the one you talked about, which is that you get a, you get a dip down to a whole dollar. Resumed, by the way. Uh, which is, oh, ACOR? It resumed, yeah. It just resumed. Okay. Just in case you wanted to trade it again. See, I usually don't touch them after this. And it, it did gap up a little bit. Yeah. It, like, it uh, wasn't enough for me like to be three too cents. upset. Yeah. yeah, like three cents. But no, one of those strategies was the whole dollar bounce. Where, uh, it's a little bit different than yours, but that whole dollar bounce scalp is super profitable. Um, see, I don't see anything really setting up for mine, no. I mean, we have ITRM, which I was watching, but at this point, it's right around the VWAP. And so I'm too worried it's just going to reject the VWAP. RCON is pulling back to the half dollar 150 VWAP level. And so, you know, we can look for a potential bounce in RCON. Um, pulling back down to 150s is strong. Um, ACOR is doing a one minute pullback as we speak. Or no, ACOR. Yeah, ACOR is one minute pullback. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to make a video about these strategies too. More and more often, a, a, a strategy I've been seeing a ton is stocks reclaiming VWAP and then pulling the one minute pullback. So you can see ACOR is a good example. It reclaimed the VWAP and then right after that, we get a consolidation candle that we can attack here and you can scalp that breakout above it. And even if it pulls back here, just for a scalping play, looking for that high right here to break and then scalping that 10 or 15 cents, just looks super profitable as well. All right, so one green trade today. That's it for me. Nothing too crazy yet. APTX. I think it may halt here. Is this a halt level? Yeah, it is a halt level. For Acor, it just halted on the downside. Oh, really? Oof. That's a gruesome one. I'm not a big fan of these, like, $1 stocks. I'm way, way more... Uh in favor of like four to seven dollar stocks like those are my favorite kind of sucks that the only stocks that are doing like that we're doing well are two one dollar stocks feels bad right see i don't mind the one dollar ones uh, you know it, it's all it's all a uh, preference base but i used to hate the one dollar stocks but as time goes on with the dip buying strategies i think they perform the best with the momentum strategies i think they're a little bit worse you know Hmm. I'm looking. I'm waiting for SGBX to reverse here. We also got a few that are also showing up. NVFY. Nothing really. AMRH. AMRH is actually moving here. Big range or small range. What's the float? Small float. Um. Yeah, ITRM is not really looking that bad. We did get the crossover and then we got a dip here. And these are kind of my favorite. The only problem is I'm worried it's going to reject the VWAP level. Ah, uh, man, ITRM was it. 
talk myself out of it with the VWAP being there. Um, and I, I don't hate it. I think if I had to take it, I would have had to take bigger sizing, but um, we'll see what happens. Yeah, ACR. Let's see. Yeah. Hmm. CBLI. I just looked at CBLI. I'm not a big fan, but. <clears throat> yeah, too weak now. I saw too a lot much... of people. Saying, um, CBLI. Yeah, I was just gonna say. Uh, uh, I was just gonna say. Uh, that opening range candle is too big. It kind of blocks out any type of momentum, in my opinion, based off of just how huge this first candle is. You know, because like a lot of what my strategy and, and system revolves around is red to green moves. So we're looking for like the high of this candle to break. And it's just such a wide candle now that it kind of, you know, like I said, kind of blocks momentum for me, at least. Unfortunately for that one. A little slow now, honestly. I mean, we got a lot of stuff that uh, initially pushed and then failed and so you know yeah unfortunately i'm not seeing um a lot of trades yeah it really Which, sucks too because i'm yeah. not i still have all ways to go before i hit my 100 bucks right. i might not be able to get my chipotle <laughs> hey I, I i actually hold myself really really strict to that rule like no matter how bad i want chipotle if I don't hit at least one hundred dollars profit, I won't do it. Like I will, like the, uh, out of every hey, it's rule, reward. Ever seen, it's a reward. Uh, it's conditioning a reward is what that is, and so that way yeah. you got to do it. It makes you have something to kind of strive for, you know. Yeah, because like today I was actually like this morning I was planning to get Chipotle, and um, it looks like I, I most likely won't unless something picks up and we get some some uh, actual volatility. I'm not gonna get my Chipotle. Right. Feels bad. <laughs> At least I got my coffee. Yeah. That will be my consolation. Right. I guess eight yeah. core is still a possibility, depending on what it does out of the halt. Yeah, see, I gave up coffee, bro. And I love coffee, too. I was like a big coffee drinker, man, with all those stomach you issues. You gave it up. Which, huh? Well, I, you gave it up. Not, not, not... In, in, intentionally like I gave it up because of uh, stomach problems right like uh, I think it like I don't know what is really wrong with me I think honestly there might be some hope in me drinking coffee again because what I had to do was I got on this this acid reducing drug which is called omeprazole it's Prilosec it's omeprazole and apparently when you try to stop taking it it causes a rebound effect and so I've been on it for like the past year off and on and I, I assumed that my stomach issues were coming back every time I would stop taking the Prilosec. But after researching it and finding out that it did have a rebound effect, I think that I might have been experiencing those stomach issues based off of solely me stopping the Prilosec as like a rebound effect. And they've done studies where people that don't even have acid reflux experience these rebound effects. And so I've been on day five, or it's like day five or six without taking it, and I felt so much better. You know, like I, I feel fine at all. So I might start trying to drink coffee again. Uh, and I love coffee. You know, I'm a big coffee drinker too. Yeah, I drink, I drink like uh, as far as shots of espresso, I have like between two to four a day. Nice. Yeah, see, yeah. that's, I love coffee too, man. Um, um, but I'm drinking green tea now just because I have to. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm a big tea drinker too. I just love caffeine, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, someone said go to Taco Bell instead. I cannot go to Taco Bell instead. Chipotle is, I'm a, I'm, true to chipotle right I, how uh, dare you i'm very loyal yeah <laughs> um no qdoba only chipotle and then um i was yeah. asked what my favorite food at chipotle is but this is my order i get a bowl with white rice black beans half chicken half carnitas pico corn cheese and uh there you go queso guac no queso and guac no they oh, bro, they charge extra out. for that Ugh. and i'm still uh a college student so yeah. trying to budget i mean i'm, I'm already gonna splurge and go and get chipotle like fucking four i mean sorry you're good you're good uh youtube yeah, yeah. I, I if i'm gonna splurge and get some chipotle i'm going to um at least try to save a little bit where i can you know and um guac and queso yeah extra it makes it makes it like maybe a little bit better but at the end of the day, the bowl is still amazing without it, so. 
Yeah, see, I'm a big uh, guac queso. I get I get I get a burrito with uh, chicken guac queso uh, uh, cilantro rice um, beans. You gotta have beans in there too. Um, yeah, I, I black beans is mine. mine. Nice. Black beans, white rice. ITRM pushed up, guys. It's at right around 120. But yeah, for cursing, bro, don't feel bad, man. It's not against the rules to curse. Like we can curse here, and you know. Okay. Right. I, I've, I tried I've, to I've, not do it because I know it's bad for like YouTube. So. Yeah. I it, it, that. Yeah, one slipping's not the. You know, you'll be alright. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I've cursed here before, just to put it into perspective. You know, it happens. Um, but yeah, ITRM pulled up above the VWAP and now it's rejecting the VWAP, which is really what I was worried about. If I was going to, the only trade idea I was thinking here was in between the moving averages and uh, the VWAP. Like this is the range I was attacking and we just never quite hit that um, for me. I mean, we hit it, but it didn't look enticing enough for me to take it. Today's one of those days where I don't see much and so I'm being very patient and disciplined with my trading because there's just not a lot to trade this morning, I don't think. Austin said, uh, geez, Eric, you must eat Chipotle three to four times a week. I break a hundred dollars profit three to four times a week. If I, if I break a hundred dollars profit five days, I get five days of Chipotle. Yeah. Um, and I, like, I think every week I hit a hundred dollars at least three times. I like get the bare minimum. So three, three to four times a week is fair. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's reasonable. I like, uh, Cafe Rio, yeah, no, in in, uh, in Louisiana, we used to have a place called Izzo's Illegal Burrito. Really, if you want to be honest, though, though here, uh, Moe's Burrito was prior to any of these other burrito places. Like, Moe's Burrito has been around longer than any of those places, and Moe's may not have kind of gotten as big as some of these other burrito places, but as an old person, Moe's has been around, you know. Uh, cilantro? What's wrong? Do I say cilantro wrong? Is that, you know? I think some people say cilantro. Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, I guess it's like niche, niche. niche. I, yeah, I don't know. If, um, I don't know if like both are correct or one or the other is correct. I just know that um, I've heard cilantro. Yeah, cilantro is probably right. Yeah. <laughs> you gonna turn into a chipotle? See, I don't even like chipotle sauce though. That's the problem. You know. I'm gonna try to get. I think if my if my channel grows, guys. Subscribe to my channel so I yeah. can get a Chipotle sponsorship. Yeah, please. Yeah. Go, yeah, I'll, like I think, is the link in the description? If the link is in the description, oh, I forgot to go and subscribe, it. or YouTube.com/slash Eric Green. Yeah. Subscribe and then email Chipotle. Actually, you don't have to do this, but if you wanted to, you can email Chipotle and be like, put your name on Eric Green because he loves your product. Like, right. I would not. I'm not kidding. If I like my dream is if Chipotle would give me like a card. That I can swipe at their locations and get free food. I promise, I would like promote their product like no tomorrow. I would get a <laughs> tattoo across my forehead saying Chipotle, and like, like my I'll replace my YouTube banner and my icon all with Chipotle. Every video will just be about Chipotle. I promise. I just want that sponsorship from Chipotle. Hey, get it, do it, man, do it. Y'all go check it out. I posted the link in the chat. Y'all go check it out. He's got some great content. Some I know we're joking around and talking about Chipotle, but he's got some great trading content that is super beneficial for new traders really kind of teaching them he's a very high volume scalper profitable trader trades you know a big boy account and is legitimately doing this in trading so y'all go check out his channel there's the link uh don't forget to subscribe to that um help me help me hit that chipotle benchmark i don't know how many how big the channel needs to be to hit that chipotle benchmark but that's my goal yeah. once i hit uh the chipotle sponsorship i know that that like my life right. will just like if happiness right now is at like maybe like a six or seven out of ten getting that chipotle sponsorship would put me at like a 10 100 percent. hey help the man achieve his dreams team hit that subscribe button go do it now um eric you're crazy <laughs> <laughs> like i'm thinking about changing my youtube profile like my youtube account from Eric Green to Eric Chipotle Green. No, well, I'm keep, not... <laughs> it, keep it Eric Green because there's a bit of it. What you do is whenever you get memberships unlocked for your members, you you call them the Chipotle gang. Like that's the what Chipotle you do. gang. Yeah, that's what you do, right? <laughs> that's that's 100% it. Yeah. Right, like that's what you do. That's you know? 100% it, yeah. Um, the Chipotle gang. That's that's what uh, my community is now gonna be called. Yeah, somebody say Actually, it. sorry. Go ahead. No, there go ahead. Uh, in, in, my, in one of the discords I'm involved in, 
the other day someone was asking like me my order and they're gonna go get chipotle so it actually works like chipotle legitimately should sponsor me because i'm giving them new customers yeah, that guy sure. is gonna go try chipotle and he right. chipotle is gonna have a new addict right for sure so, you know it's all business you know yeah. somebody's all right let's talk about stocks somebody's getting mad we're not talking about stocks okay, my bad. My bad. there's just not much movement guys there's not much movement you know um uh, Mitchell Mitchell Swag said, "How fast is your connection considering you scalp?" Um, <clears throat> let me run an internet speed test for you real quick. Let me let me give you the exact scoop. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm um, supposed to have the gigabit, but I don't think I do. I'll give you the exact speed. I'm doing a speed test right now. We'll have a battle. Oh, you're probably gonna win. Though. I'm on hotel uh, on hotel Wi-Fi, so remember that, guys. Um, oh. My school, my school put me into a hotel. Oh, that's nice. So, I'm sitting in the uh, Drury Suites Hotel. As long as you don't take money to pump crappy OTC low volume trash stocks, I'm good with your channel. Yeah, I mean, there's so much of that in the trading world. Wait, really? That's what I do. That's my whole brand is just pumping OTC stocks. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't even touch OTCs realistically, though. He's joking, by the way, but like... Yeah, I don't trade OTC. Yeah, but, OTC, um, I get charged commissions on OTCs. Uh, so it says, do, do, do what do you have for ping? Oh, uh, my ping is 12. Okay, minus 2. Oof, uh, man, how are you getting a 2 the... ping at a hotel, man? Dang. Uh, I think the location that's testing is in my city. The, I'm in I'm in St. Louis City in Missouri, and my hotel is in St. Louis, so um, like the server is right by me. Yeah. And then yeah. Uh, your download? Uh, 46 megabytes per second. Uh, 48. See, hotels beat upload? me. I'm, uh, uploads 30 38. Okay, I got 54. Oh, man, dude, your hotel is killing me, man. Look do you want to know what Do you want to know what my school is when I'm at school? What? A gig up, gig down. Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I'm a bit hurts. disappointed that I'm not on school at it. I'm not at my on campus because uh, obviously that the internet's a lot better. Right. But I haven't had too many issues with the hotel Wi-Fi. It's still a little uh, bit spotty at times. Um, yeah. That's not bad. Overall, I'm not like super unhappy with it. I, I definitely think it could be way worse. Yeah, I've, I've had to stream at hotels before and it's usually terrible. It's usually like eight megabytes tops and then like upload speed. If I'm like lucky, it'll be like 15, you know? Um, yeah. IT, ITRM guys, it's the only stock that I really think is looking strong out of all these pity stocks on my list. Like I'm looking at a few other things here. ANCN is showing up, but like nothing too crazy. This one looks like a very small float though for ANCN. So maybe y'all can watch this one, but it's a... Uh, yeah, I mean, we'll see. Nothing, uh, the reason Eric and I are just talking about nonsense today is just because it's like a Friday. It's somebody else, right yeah, yeah, somebody else said it best. Today's like a Friday, which is very weird. It's just random. So you know, actually, that's something that like is sort of trading related. That So last week, I don't know how many people in the stream are, um, were also in the stream on Tuesday and Wednesday last week when I was on, but last week on monday i made 50 dollars. tuesday i made 250 and then wednesday i made 300 so i was up like 604 dollars by wednesday and if you guys remember between thursday and friday the small cap market was extremely slow uh if i remember correctly there was only one opportunity between thursday and friday and it was one of the small cap stocks what was it it was uh um i don't remember the ticker but it was like very very brief period of time where you could trade it and then afterwards there was literally nothing else for the entire day yeah. and what ended up happening is because the small cap market was so boring i went and traded uh mid to large cap and that ended up ruining my like three week green streak because i had yeah. been green for like this entire month every day for this entire month i had been making um like i think almost every single day every day, single day i was green and then almost every single day i think every day except for one or two i had at least 100 dollars profit so i was like on a on nice. a roll and I ruined my green streak and actually had a red day because I traded mid to large cap when the small cap market was boring. So that's one of the things, like my new resolution is when small cap is boring, I'm not going to go trade like nonsense because it's just super, um, it's just kind of stupid, you know? Don't go and try to like change what you're doing just because 
Right. There's nothing to trade. I'm trying to figure out where I can detach. I don't remember. I accidentally closed my um, position statement. I'm trying to remember how to detach it, but I can't remember because I always like um, to keep that on the monitor. Uh, you click the. Uh, you click the. It's the. It's the three horizontal lines. You click that, and you go back to the second to last one. It says detach. Um, I, I tried it. I got it. I got into a little bit of a uh, futures trade. I'm in another one here. We're gonna scalp that. So I just made about thirty-seven dollars. Let's see, I am up seventeen bucks on the day. Uh, so we're I, I'm I've moved to scalping a little bit of futures in penny stocks though. We do have ITRM. It's just not really my strategy at the moment. Uh, and I one of the reasons, like honestly, I've been very happy with my system, guys. And, and, and like my penny stock system has been working extremely well. But the reason it works is because I stick to it and, and I don't I don't deviate from that system, you know. Um, oh, my bad. Were you saying something, Eric? Oh, no, I wasn't. I'm just okay. drinking coffee. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, uh, let me see. Let me try to talk to the chat. Yeah, hit that like button, team. Um, oh, here, let me add your link into the description. Yeah, if anybody wants to check out Eric's link uh, to his channel, he's got, like I said, he's got a really dope channel, um, super educational and just beneficial for new traders. Man, your uh, um your auto moderator is very sensitive. Oh, uh, it's no, I, 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 it's just like one of the messages that I clicked show to like allow it to go through it was like not right. even a bad message at all. Yeah, yeah, it's it, for some reason it'll bleep out just random stuff. It bleeped out rascals. Yeah, 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 it'll bleep out just random stuff. Uh, and it's the worst because it's a stock channel, you know. So like yeah, people will be yeah. talking about like like they'll they'll name ticker symbols and it'll bleep them out. For some oh, reason, does it know. really? That's insane. Yeah, it, sometimes, but it, it does its job, and I usually just allow it. Uh, yeah, I just want to say the only I I'm gonna call out one of one of the people in chat. So uh, the person I see getting bleeped most is tactical trading, and then right. in the brackets, penny stocks. That guy yeah. gets bleeped like every other <laughs> message he posts. <laughs> yeah, he really does too, and I gotta allow it. Yeah. And, and the reason is because he, he a lot of the time he's talking about symbols. You know, so a lot and of times he always, he's talking he also about like puts like in curse words and stuff that uh, that right. YouTube doesn't like, and yeah. then you have to permit it. But it's funny, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Stock market. Uh, stock market is. Wait, were we talking about Chipotle? No, uh, we're not. Stock market junkie said enough Chipotle talk. I don't right. think. Maybe they're behind our delayed yeah. or something. Exactly. That's what I told him. Yeah. I was like, hey, we're, I don't think we've talked about Chipotle in a little bit. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. We we you know we've censored the Chipotle talk, but all you gotta do if if you're behind, you just click live. If you look at the play button on your on your media player at the bottom left, you just click the live button and you'll be you'll be back. Uh, yeah, CBLI Man, TRM is dying. Yeah, see, this is why none of like any strategy where a stock fights and like breaks above the view up. It's not really my style. Like, there's a few strategies that I want to test, but like, I'm more of like a reversal strategy look at cbli is is a lot of people mention this one this one is starting to rebound here so we're starting to get some moves up for oh, cbli wow. Specifically. actually wow i had no idea this was going on yeah man there's 425 so it's starting to move for cbli so according to this script that i was given the halt level on cb uh cbli right now is going to be like 440. <clears throat> i want to see the stock halt really bad so i can like test and see how accurate this script is because if it is accurate that can change the game for me yeah oh the halt script yeah i was sent uh i was sent emailed the halt script mm -hmm. so i can see halts on thinkorswim and i'm curious how accurate it is because if it's accurate that will like be a game changer right yeah that would be super valuable um yeah, CBLI is starting to fight back, though. It, I think 425 is an interesting level, and that's kind of where we're getting rejected as the quarter dollar 425. And it also, if we look at that level, it confirms it, you know, prior to that as well. So, uh, but see, the problem with this one is that it kind of halts the momentum for me because that first opening candle is so broad that it makes it hard for me to trade red to green moves, which is kind of my system here. Okay, I don't think the halt script works because the halt script says that it's the halt's at 436. And we're at four four. Hmm. So. Um, well, is it is it a predictive one or is it using some other type of data? I don't know how it was. I don't know about how the script was made. I was just sent it and. Uh, because it might not work every time, but if it can predict oh, them a certain. Oh wow! Ooh. 
Wow. All right, there it goes. So so here's that break of 488 that I was talking about here, team. Look at that. Um, it's not my system at all, so I'm not going to trade this. But oh, wow. there's 490s. Wow. CBLI, guys, making oh some my huge God. runs. Yeah. Well, here's the halt level. It's at 97. And it's halted right now. What, what? No, it's not halted yet. Oh, oh, it looked like it was halted. It froze for a second. Um, All right, nice. I just made a $23 scalp there. I bought at 72, sold at 79. Nice. Yeah, good, wow, good and then it broke because it was a new candle. The uh, halt level was pushed up. Wow, Oof. dude, this is ridiculous. Yeah. So if you remember at the, at the beginning of the day, I said that the daily resistance was at five. Right. Um, and it just destroyed five. Like, it destroyed it. So well, It's still hovering around there. Let's see if it holds now. Um, I'm telling you, this stock is going to like go insane. I don't know what the next level is, though. Yeah, I'm uh, surprised it didn't get halted again. Look at that green candle. Look at this candle, that, that second to last candle, that green candle. That thing is is uh, like an 80-cent 80, 80 candle. Wow, 5 million five shares million of shares. volume. That's what wow. I'm saying. I'm surprised. That, so, like, the halt, the halt script, it tried to predict that, I think. It's just, you know what I mean? Like, it... it uh, usually those moves are getting halted. You know, a, that's a ton of volume coming in yeah. in one big, huge candle like that. So I'm, I'm honestly surprised it's not halted. Wow. But maybe I, the volume uh, is just so low from for the rest of the stocks. Wow, this is that was a really, really cool move. Um, I only made like 20 bucks on it, 20 to 21 dollars on it, but at least I got a little bit. I was only trading 300 shares, so I made like what 20, 21 dollars on 1,200 dollars. I don't know that's what that is percentage-wise, but... That's not bad. Yeah. Hey, nice hunt. divided by... 20, oops. 21 divided by 1,200. So that's like about like a 1.5%. Not horrible. I mean, it's not great, but it's not horrible. Because yeah. that, that move exploded way more than 1.5%. Right. But I just got a little scalp. I bought the, I mean, I bought in at, I think, 7.2, I said is what I said, what I said and uh, it went to a low of 69, so I was three right. cents off. Right. Yeah, I'm in a one contract of the S&P 500. We're going to get out. Oh, you're still uh, doing futures? Yeah, well, I'm doing futures now. I just got out, so I made about $50 there, it looks like. Oh, right damn. Now. Nice job. Well, yeah, I'm just, uh, nothing. Oh, on, the, wait, on futures or CPLI? Oh, futures. Oh, I thought you were talking about CBLI. No, no, no. Yeah, I just one contract of, of uh, futures. Uh, like I said, I, in penny stocks right now, the only one really moving is CBLI, and it's just not really yeah. my system. I'm know? glad it finally took off, though, because this is the one I had such high hopes for this morning, and then when it kind of just died off, I was kind of sad because this was what I was expecting to be the uh, big one for the day. Right. And uh, finally, it's becoming the big one. Hopefully, yeah. we can see it run up more. I think it might, but... Yeah, um, watch 520, the previous high of the day. Watch that, and then see if it gets over like 525. But the next resistance level above us is 550, I think. Um, have, so here's the uh, test. have you looked at that? I'm, I haven't looked at the daily to see it. Uh, <clears throat> no, I'm using just by recent. Uh, really, we're above everything on the last year, and so we could look at a weekly chart. Uh, weekly chart so diluted oh, someone, that it's someone, hard to tell. Uh, I have a guy who runs a like a volume profile script, and he posted it in one of the chats I'm in. So the next uh, resistance that he ha he has shown, it has a volume ranking of 99.6, and it's at 5.47. So hmm. that's yeah, right around there. All right, there's the break. So there's the break. There's the 520 break. Um, we'll see if it holds now. These Looks get like faked it might out be a lot. False. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. So getting some volume come in. Trying. Big wick now. Give it one more second. There's another push. Now this is going to be a real break. Yeah, this is the push right here. Well, Where? <laughs> both. I, I thought it was too. There it is. Uh, there we go. Okay, yeah. There's the level the push. two hey. was feeling strong, but right. It's... Yeah, there we go. Yeah, see, wow, uh, that's super bouncy, dude. Wow. Wow, this is really, really bouncy. Yeah, this is. These are moves I try to avoid. Hey, I appreciate the sub, uh, Mucho. Welcome in. Thank you both. Yeah, y'all hit that like and subscribe button, team. I'm liking this though. It's super fun. This is what makes trading like such a game for me. It's like stocks like this. Yeah. Very high. Like stock trading is a game for me. It's like a video game. I quit all my video games and got into trading. Uh, that's what how like I started spending so much time doing this. Right. Yeah. No. Uh, and I'm it's still a video game for me. Yeah. No. <laughs> it really. Honestly. Is. 
my buddy and I play video games all the time. And, like, I'm a big video game player, Xbox. Like, I play UFC 4. Fun fact, I'm in the top 100 in the world in UFC 4. Uh, currently ranked. Actually, uh, that's a lie. I'm at number 104 in the world. So I'm, I'm close. I call myself the top 100 in the world. Uh, but I'm more of a Halo player. But when I try to explain stocks to my friend that I play Xbox with, like one of my best friends in the world, like I've known him since I was a kid, um, I always try to explain it to him like it's like playing video games where you can win or lose a ton of money, you know, is the best way to describe it, you know. And But it, it's just like learning to be good at stocks is kind of like learning to be good at a video game. It's just conditioning. Um, hey, that's not very nice, Steven. I'm yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was going to say, <laughs> you know, chill, man. Like, what's Did the you point see Kyle's, Kyle's newest video? Huh? Who? Oh, no, I didn't. Kyle's stopped no longer uploading to um, YouTube, and he deleted all of his old videos um, for a couple different reasons. One, like, even though the vast majority of comments are kind, the couple hate comments were, like, really, really getting to him and affecting right. his mental. And then on top of that, it was also that um, he wanted to try to keep the strategy under wraps. Yeah. Well, there's, there's credence to that. I think that... I think that strategies are one of those things Ooh, look at that rejection on cbli i think it's very difficult to be a youtuber and i think people don't understand like like i said like even look at yesterday's stream for instance like if anybody watched the stream yesterday just me getting frustrated caused all this nonsense from people like people literally get mad at you for getting mad well, i wasn't watching you know? the chat i wasn't sure what happened uh, in the chat oh yeah well it, it that's kind of part of it like people get people get frustrated with me for being frustrated it's like I'm a human, man. Like I get frustrated. <laughs> like I'm gonna get aggravated. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna lose my temper sometimes. Like I do this every day. So it's yeah. like I'm a human, man. Like of course I'm gonna get frustrated sometimes. The worst response to somebody being frustrated is getting frustrated. You know? <laughs> like oh yeah, I'm not angry, but I will stay, Stephen. I may not know what I'm talking about, or I may be talking out of my. Um, I'm not gonna curse because again, YouTube, my butt. Uh, I may yeah. be talking out of my butt, but at the end of the day, I'm still making like five hundred to seven hundred dollars a week. Uh, as a college student so I'm, i'll talk out of my butt all day and uh sit on my piles of cash <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> with, yeah with my chipotle <laughs> yeah for sure uh it, it, it like i said just ignore it man it, it happens bro like like yeah. i said like I've, I've been streaming every day for like years now hey my man appreciate the uh, ten dollar super chat king of calls hey i appreciate that brother each each um, each time someone uh hates it gets easier to deal with the next step next oh, 100 uh, it's it, like it, it calluses you know yeah it, it one when you really get after you experience it for so long like i always tell people like make fun of yourself that's what i tell my daughter like i have a, a 11 year old daughter that we had when we were really young and and uh you know I always tell her, like, if, if you got a kid being mean to you in school, just make fun of yourself. Laugh at yourself. Don't take yeah. yourself too serious. And, you oh, did you see King of Calls? Made 2K in CBI. Oh. That's really cool. Nice hey, job, man. Kill it, man. Kill it. That's insane. I hope someday I can uh, learn to uh, talk from my mouth instead and make thousands <laughs> instead of hundreds. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kyle's also disappointed that uh, they with the amount of money he's making because he used to be making like three to five k a day, and nowadays he's only making like one k a day, and yeah. he said that that's been making him like super sad, which what? I kind of get because if I went from making a hundred to two hundred dollars a day to only making like thirty to fifty a day, that would definitely sure. affect me mentally. Oh, for sure. You know, I mean, I would love to make a thousand dollars a day from trading, but you know, it, you know, a seventy five percent drop is significant. You know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, it is what it is, you know. Uh, will I have another kid? Probably so. We're gonna, you know, we're we're doing it. A lot of work. Yeah, yeah, for sure. People don't <laughs> understand, man. Like, like uh, anybody that anybody that's like, yeah, I'm, you know, m you know, my spouse is pregnant. We're gonna have a kid. I, I always tell them, sleep while you can. <laughs> once that kid is born, you ain't about to get no sleep for like a solid like six months at least, you know. Um, yeah, but, I guess yeah. So. I have a six-year-old. He's going to be seven soon, and then I have an 11-year-old. But we're trying to wait time in between the two because, you know, having a bunch of young ones is difficult. Um, Joel said that he took two trades for the day, and I think he said 10% um, account gain. So that's pretty cool, and he's going to be heading out. So hey. see you later, Joel. Nice Thanks, job, Joel. though. Good trades. Yeah. Kill it, man. Uh Hey, John, do you have to manually hit join every month? I thought when I joined, it would be set on auto. Guess it's not recurring, or is that a setting you have to set? To be honest, dude, I have no idea, brother. You know? Yeah. Um, I, I, I know we got a lot of people that 
uh, I think I think it's going to be it might be an option that you select as you do it, but I honestly I've never I'm only joined one channel ever, and so I really have no. Is idea. it wait actually who was it? Are, will you tell us? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's Joshua Fluke. It's an old school uh, channel that I've watched for years. It's a programming channel. It used to be programming. Okay, so it's not about our niche, though. I no, wasn't no. Sure if it was in our niche. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not in nobody in our niche. It's just uh, yeah, it's a programming channel basically. Do you say niche or niche? Or uh, I say niche, niche more than niche. Niche sounds like a curse word, and so I try. I, I feel like YouTube's gonna be like, <laughs> okay. no, you know. Yeah, I get you. I never thought about that. <laughs> yeah, I never so, thought about that. So niche is just easier to say, you know. Um, Wow, hey, I appreciate the sub, Ruben. I don't, Max, Maxim, Maxim. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but six children. That's insane. I can't imagine. I don't want any kids. But. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I love my kids, but they're, they're, you know, no rest, you know. My channel would probably be five times bigger if I didn't have kids, you know. Yeah. So CBL, I'll oh, get you'd hit. be spending more time or something? Yeah, for sure. It's just less time available. Um. Six or uh, four fifty. Watch four fifty here for CBLI. It is pulling back some. Volume uh, is uh, still looking pretty good, though it's not five million shares. Right. Yeah, we're about one point five, or no, we are at we are at one now, basically. So we'll see. Just big drop. Everybody's taking profits and, and getting out before. So. Yeah, it is getting to the point though where I I think this is a little bit more than profit taking. I don't know if uh Shorts. if we'll be seeing um. This might be like the backside. I, I don't sure. know if we'll be uh, getting a new high of day. Right. Hey, nice, Alexandro. Hey, congrats. Only up $30 on the day, so I'm kind of disappointed because uh, there was opportunity to be up a couple hundred, but that, that, that always happens when I'm on stream as I make like less than I would otherwise. Right. Good job, Caitlin. Nice job for the green week so far. Hopefully, uh, you keep that pace and you can keep it up for the rest of the week. Great for the week. Nice, Caitlin. Yeah. Trading with kids, running around is definitely a talent. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I, I mean. I'm still looking at futures, but uh, the spy itself and the E mini is just kind of consolidating right now. So maybe when we get some breaks, I'll jump back in those. As for want to get stocks, into futures sometime, I think it would be really fun to just give it a try, like do it for a week. It's been the easiest transition I've ever had in trading, the easiest market to learn. Um, I mean, I, I know like scalping strategies, uh, CPHIs pop it off a little bit, team. Um, but yeah, it's like I, it, I look at the SPY and the E mini, and it's one of the easier transitions. Um, I think what intimidated the, what intimidated me about it before was just the different sizing with contracts as opposed to shares. Um, but it's basically the same thing. It's it's you know one contract equals twelve fifty on the E mini up and down one tick, right? So if it goes up one tick, you make twelve fifty. If it goes down one tick, if you're long, you lose twelve fifty. And if you have two contracts, it's twenty five dollars. If you have three contracts, it's thirty seven fifty. Four contracts, every tick up or down is fifty bucks. And that's it. That's all you really learn. Aside from that, it's just scalping the market itself. Um, but it's profitable, you know. Yeah. It as for like actual penny stocks, I'm not seeing anything right now. Um, some people were talking about WEI, but I, I'm not sure about that stock in my, seems a little, uh, scary. Ooh, man. Not really that's, my style where it's like just halting, halting. Yeah. I thought it was OTC. It looked OTC, but it's not, man. Um, huge, crazy move, man. This is weird. It literally, yeah, this I probably be won't like, end up trading it, but it's fun to watch stuff this like up. this. Yeah. I gotta look this one up. It, it looks like it's not even like a stock, or it either looks OTC. Let me see. It kinda looks like like a trust or something. I don't know. I gotta look up the float. Yeah, float is unavailable. Weird. Hey, thank you for the sub, for, uh, Fernando. Thank you, man. A lot of subs today, guys. So appreciate the love. Hey, nice, Richard. Yeah, if y'all want to check out the Top Step program, it's pretty it's pretty nice. It, it really, um, it's one of the cheaper ways to get involved with the futures market. Like I'm using the the one step up from the cheapest uh, Top Step account. 
and so they give me like 50k in equity to trade with and and some other stuff but the way it works is you know it's just a combine and so they kind of you know you got to prove yourself as a futures trader but it's super cheap it's the cheapest funded account program i've ever used um you know the one i bought after my my 20 percent off was like 130 bucks and so very very cheap uh, and if you could prove yourself as a futures trader, like the base one, I think you got to make like $2,000 in profit. And if you make $2,000 in profit on their challenge account while following their rules, they fund you that $30,000 with a profit split. And it's a good profit split too. Uh, I think it's 80% and you get to keep all of your first withdrawal. So your first withdrawal, you get to keep 100% of it, I think. Um, you know, really dope platform. You know, scalping is great on there. Uh, there's zero commissions, but there are some fees. And so it's just really set up to help me actually get funded it's one of the highest reviewed funded account programs i've seen as well just because i think you know they actually want you to get funded um and so you know you can get funded as a proprietary futures trader and again if you're just now wanting to get involved with the futures market i'll post this link here you're basically just scalping the market with the e-mini or you can scalp like oil with crude you can scalp cattle prices gold whatever your niche is or sector they got some info what there's the link if you want to check that out Oh, Caitlin, that was you. Yeah, yeah. Y'all go check out Caitlin's channel. She's got a really cool channel as well. She she messaged me, um, you know, and, and this is a good lesson, guys, as well. On if you just ask me, I, I'll probably help you out. Like, I'll probably give you a shout out if you just ask me. If you try to do it without asking me, though, you know, that's where the problem rolls in. But yeah, y'all go check out Caitlin's channel. Um, she said that she is very small, but the purpose is the chan the purpose of the channel is to educate people on how to save trade and invest money the smart way and so i'll post this link here uh here is the link to our channel y'all go subscribe to it uh her name is caitlin and she's just now starting a youtube y'all go check it out there's the link to that as well um uh, you get to keep the first five thousand. okay that's not bad cbli moving up again yeah wei is pulling back some we got bxrx showing up on the scans now too uh yeah, look at CBLI, man. It's above the pre-market high again. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, and if you can prove your... Yeah, try breed says. If you can prove yourself on a funded account, you can definitely do well on your own. Yeah, for sure. The hardest part of the Top Step funded account program that I'm experiencing, like one of the, one of the flaws of it, if you will is that you got to trade large, right? Like if it was just me trading or you get stuck trading large sometimes, like if it was just me trading and it was like actual profits, it, I would trade noticeably smaller. You know, I would trade way smaller and I would just kind of take small, you know, little wins and let those add up because I can make little 20, 30 bucks every day. Um, the problem though, is that when you're trying to get funded, you got to trade a little bit larger, which does add, does add some risk to it. But you can also kind of reset your account if you need to, and it's 100 bucks, and just get a fresh account, which is fine. And I think continuing to try it until you get funded and maybe swinging for it until you get like enough equity to pass and then kind of skating by with small trades after that, I think is probably the most reasonable way to get funded on these top step accounts. And sure, you might have to blow through a few hundred bucks trying to get funded, but I think once you're funded and you can withdraw, I think it'll be fine. Um, but again, it's very subjective, I guess. Um, so what you watching now, Eric? I'm still watching, uh, CBLI. Okay. Yeah. Look at that pullback. That's a big drop. Yeah. A little bit slow for me. Um, I got one yeah, trade. I mean, again, I'm only up 30 bucks for the day. So I'm a little bit sad. <laughs> I'm not a little bit sad. I'm very sad, <laughs> but, um, you know, it's not going to be a home run or even it's not, even, this isn't even a first base day. This is like, I, yeah. I like I bunted and then I tried to like run to first base and then they just like ran me down and <laughs> attacked yeah. me. Hey, I don't play baseball, happens. so that analogy is probably pretty bad. But <laughs> nah, I, mean, uh, yeah. I was I was a tennis player. I played tennis and basketball. Oh, nice. Mainly tennis though. Tennis was my my main sport. See, I always liked tennis, but I was, I was always terrible at it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's just a dull day, man. It's like a Friday. Look at uh, I mean, there, there was a big opportunity. Don't get me wrong. Like CBLI right. presented a big opportunity, but it was over the course of four candles. So, and on those four candles, I only made like 
twenty-five dollars. So. Yeah. It's it's kind of embarrassing. It's like, wow, you made twenty-five dollars on a, uh, <laughs> like, nah, how much was that move? Random, it was like, it was like a dollar move, a dollar move, and I made like twenty, uh, twenty-five dollars. But you know, it is yeah. what it is. Yes, uh, I mean, listen, that just means good risk management. I get made fun of all the time for trading too small, right? But the reality is the people that are encouraging you to trade large are usually the same people that are just going to destroy their account, you know, and yeah. then they're never going to tell you about it and they're going to act like they're the greatest traders ever when the reality is, you know, trading small is fine. You should never make fun of somebody in trading for trading too small. Like, there's no such a thing, you know. Also, uh, Fling, Flingshot Live asked me, um, what price do I see on CBLL? He's trying to find the time delay and for that answer just look at uh john's uh trade ideas it has the clock on there yeah um although actually so my actually i'll just tell you the time on my my uh clock right now for me it's uh 25 minutes 37 seconds yeah and i'm not saying the hour because it that just depends on your time zone okay. And Michael asked, am I a team doll fan? I don't actually watch um, professional, I don't watch any professional sports. So um, I don't think I'm a fan of any like uh, professional athlete. Um, Someone said start. spy breakout, SPI. Yeah, that's what I'm just pulling up. We also have FRSX, which has put in some big moves, but I don't hate SPI's breakout here. Um, pulling down a nine. I'm always skeptical though of stocks that aren't trading volume like this whenever like it's such low volume i just can't trade it like if you remember the other day when spy was like not the other day but the other week when spy was insane it was trading like a million shares a candle so now like the, that the fact that it's moving on such low volume i just i don't want to touch it uh that's just my my always been my opinion because when like things are moving on this little volume such huge moves can happen um in unpredictable ways deleting all the delay comments please don't get mad at me team I'm just you know um but yeah anybody that streams trade ideas has to have a delay you know like so you're not gonna find a trade idea stream without one um a, a n c n showing up sos showing up so we are getting some moves here i think frsx was another one that i was watching um yeah look at frsx just broke over a dollar pulling back down to 105s and if you want to go check out trade ideas if you want if you want to you know, no delay scans. Y'all go check out Trade Ideas. You can get 15% off if you use our promo code BT15. And you can see Nightbot just posted it. Um, yeah, so just a slow day, team. Not, nothing too crazy that's going on. Yeah, somebody else asked, what does getting funded mean? Uh, they fund you as a proprietary trader. And so you get funded as a prop trader, basically. And and so if, you, if you're in the 30K challenge and you actually complete it they fund you 30 grand and you know there's a profit split i believe it's 80 it's uh, 80 20 on, so on you, your previous streams you always say 80 20 yeah yeah i think it's 80 20 i'm not 100 percent sure but i think it's 80 20 uh so that would be like if you make a thousand dollars you keep 800 they keep 200 Yeah, and if you want to check that out, you know, I'll post that link again just to sell out one more time, you know. Uh, RCON starting to fight back a little bit, though. Um, but yeah, just a dull, a, a dull day. I'm also looking at the SPY to trade some futures here. But, uh, you know, we're pulling back to the VWAP. Um, I don't hate this, but I don't want to get stuck in chop either. Uh, so we're watching the spy a little bit. Maybe we'll get one contract here. Um, we're in with one contract. Make sure you guys can see this. All right, so I just jumped out of there with a little bit of profit. Um, no, nah, I didn't quite get the full profit that I wanted, but uh, you know, it was enough to be sufficient. So yeah, we're up $60 in futures today. I, I gotta be pretty accurate, I think, today. 
Yeah, I'm running at 66% accuracy. Uh, the only losing trade I've had was only a 1250 loss. So look at these graphs, not a bad little session. And yeah, this is the challenge account. So this is the uh, proving yourself part of the top step, but not too bad so far. WWR reversal. I'm still watching CBLI. I just don't think I'm going to be trading it anymore. I might actually just be finishing the day with $30 profit, which kind of sucks. Green is green, bro. You know, and hey, it just means you're having good risk management. Because I mean, like, uh, I don't know. It, there, there wasn't a lack of opportunity today. I mean, there was a shortage of it, but there was that it still existed. Right. Yeah, like Thursday, Friday last week, there was like almost no opportunity. And then um, today there was, I just missed it. Yeah, there was opportunity, but you know, it, it, it was very uh, limited, I think. Not limited opportunity, but a small window. There I guess, was a small the window, yeah. yeah. And like for me right now, it's just nothing really worked. The, the best one was uh, the one I missed, which is ACOR, the one I got into, which was ACOR for my system. And aside from that, been kind of dull. Yeah, Eric's got a YouTube channel. Check the description. I did post his YouTube in the description fling. Ah, there we go. He got it. Oops, I accidentally closed the pop-out chat. Do you do that? Like, do you use the pop-out chat? No, but I should, honestly. I like the pop-out chat, it's really cool. Let me see. Oh yeah, we do have that. I'm just gonna use that. I don't even know why. It's I a game changer, that. isn't it? Right. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why I haven't used that ever. Like I, I always I just have something else. But yeah, that's that's how I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Cause then you can move it around wherever and it's like right. very you can resize it. Right. Very, very nice. Uh, I see people talking about WWR and it's starting to actually pick up uh, a good amount of volume. It's act this is something that I could probably trade a bit more, which is very nice. Right. Yeah, I'm, if I'm it keeps its volume. Yeah. All right, I just scalped uh, another small little window of, uh, of SPY here. I am up $80 on the day. On penny stocks or the um, no no futures futures um, gotcha. I'm probably actually going to look to trade WWR, most likely. Yeah. It's it's, it's having like um, enough volume and it's the type of stock that I enjoy trading. What's the float on it? Let me make sure that it's uh, around like 50 million or less floats. Yeah, it's gotta be less than 50, I would assume. It's gotta be left in 50. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's 11.6 million. Small. Very good. This is a nice, nice stock. Now I just gotta find my opportunity. This should be, I'm gonna probably take um, maybe 500 shares. It's not crazy big or anything, but $2,500 is comfortable. It's very comfy. Right. Uh, no, I do not have an Instagram. I don't like, like Instagram or, um, Twitter and all those platforms. Not a big fan. Yeah, I have, uh, I have, I have all of those. I don't ever use Instagram. Instagram, I feel old. Somebody told me the other day, they were like, Facebook is for boomers. You know, all oh, the yeah, new kids absolutely. use Instagram. And I was just kind of like, yeah, that's probably true. Cause like when I grew up, MySpace was cool. You know, when I was like a teenager, I've MySpace never used was MySpace the popular thing. Ever. Yeah, bro. Well, well, MySpace used to be kind of like Facebook, right? But oh, you could yeah, have, yeah. yeah, you could have like a, your own song and you would really code your MySpace. So you would code it with HTML and CSS um, you know, to a certain extent. It wasn't real programming, but like, uh, you know, it was, it was web development, like a little crash course on web development. But yeah, then Facebook came out in like 2008, 2009. Yeah. Um, Facebook was my first social media platform. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it's got good engagement, but it's still low relative to like Instagram, I think. Yeah, I use um the only kind of like social media that I have is Snapchat, and it's personal. I don't like use it for 
Um, business. Like, yeah, business. Yeah, it makes sense. Twitter is cool. Yeah, I Yeah, I can't stand the Twitter sphere, dude. It's, like, the most toxic environment I've ever... <laughs> like, like, I've played, like, toxic video games, or I've been in, like, different online communities that are pretty toxic, but Twitter has some, like, very, very mean people. <laughs> hey, oh, the sure. meanest people. For me, I like Reddit. Reddit is my number one platform that I use. I'm on for Reddit sure. all the time. Yeah, I can kind of see that. I mean, I, I can understand how Twitter gets like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's also like a very political for sure. um, social media, it seems. Like, uh, that's just my observation. Right. Someone said Acor is waking up. All right, so I just... I scalped a, a, another little gain here on the SPY itself. Uh, made a nice little, you know, $70, $80 there. So I'm up 136 in futures. Um, yeah, top friends. Yeah, that's right, Tribe Breed, you know. Which was always super scandalous, man, with top friends. Because, like, yeah, to put it into perspective, Eric, MySpace did this thing where you had to pick your top eight friends, right? And so it's like, if you weren't, if you had a friend and you weren't on their top eight, that hurt, man. You know, that hurt. Oh, man. That sounds <laughs> It was terrible, That's man. Awesome. It, was it terrible. kind of reminds me. Do you use Snapchat? No, I don't. I don't Snapchat, Snapchat has, like, these, like, things that will happen. Like, if you're someone's best friend and they're also, like, it goes by how much activity you have with that person. And if you're someone's best friend and then they're also, you're their best friend, then it will have, like, an emoji to signify that, like, you guys are each other's best friend. Right. And like then if badge. it's, like... Yeah, it's like, and there's badges for like different like activity for their account, and you can get an insight on like, you know, is, is this like for me? This might be the most talked to person on my list. Sure. Am I the most talked to person on theirs? And it's like, it's kind of, it just reminds me of what you were talking about with right. uh, the ranking competition. Yeah. yeah, it's like, am I gonna be there? <laughs> their... Right. You don't want to be the most talked to person, or you don't want to be, uh, you don't want them to be the person you talk to the most, but then not be theirs. You know, it hurts. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, oh, WWR pulling back to five i hate how my position statement isn't popped out what happened oh man that was so sad that should have been a ten dollar win and it wasn't it was it was break even but I, I tried to sell for that's why i hate market orders so i yeah. i did a uh join the ask and i didn't get filled so i just canceled it and did a market sell and even though like the, the pnl open displayed ten dollars profit right. it ended up getting me out at break even yeah. Which is just why, in general, I avoid using the market orders, which is, like, why? because I mentioned that yesterday, um, whenever yeah. you were using the market. It's just, like, all the time, it will, it's, like, super misleading and can cause a lot of... See, the only reason, just to play devil at, devil's advocate a little bit and take the other side here, the reason I use market orders is because I'm usually, like, very quickly scalping momentum. And so, if I try to use a limit order... Since I don't have hotkeys set up, it's going to take me so long to cancel that order and then redo it and then change the share size and then cancel it again that market orders, even though sometimes I might get screwed on the fill, are just better protective because it's like especially like I usually use market order when, when I exit and I use a limit order to get in. And the reason for that is because I'm trying to... you know to... what I just realized? What? The reason why it's hard for you to cancel is you don't have the cancel button. I, I use cancel all. I have a oh. button for cancel all. So my guess is if you want to cancel an order, you're having to click the X. Correct. Which is slow as hell. Yeah. Right. Do you use cancel button, like cancel all? That yeah, that's like what I'm it's just do. bam, cancel and it's gone. Yeah, I'm uh, gonna add that here. That makes yeah. sense actually. I don't know why I didn't have it use that before. Yeah, for me, I like it. I click join the bid and then I'll like join like to get in. I'll click join the ask to get out. And if I don't get filled, like I'm immediately clicking cancel all and then go to market. Right. For and me that, that whole sense. sequence happens in like a second. Yeah. Somebody said, still no hotkeys? Yeah, listen, hotkeys... Hotkeys on think or swim are bad, dude. Right, it's it's not that I'm against hotkeys, I'm just, it's not, maybe I'm a little bit stubborn, but it's like, I just like to do them the way I'm the most comfortable with and the way that I've done them for the longest time. And the only thing I really have to get used to is pressing enter after I change share size, and that's it, right? <laughs> yeah, you if definitely, can... clicking enter, or actually, can I, can we, like, real quick, after you add that button, um... Change the. I just want to like make sure you see what I'm talking about whenever I sent those messages because I don't know if like uh, we're on the same page. So like change the number right now. Like type in. So I'm gonna change my number to. So I'm changing it to from two uh, from 500 to 250. Now just click like on the quantity. Do you see the quantity? Yeah. 
Actually, oh, I guess it doesn't work. You have to actually click on the chart. Yeah, I guess right. you have to click on the chart. Yeah, wow. which is like super aggravating. It's easier just to press enter, you yeah, know, and then I, it's there. Um, and so yeah, that's the really definitely the best. Yeah. Right. That's that's what I have to condition myself to do is change the sphere side, press enter. You know, change the size, press enter. Like if I can, and that should be a simple fix. But it's like, like I said, the reason I don't use hotkeys and I just like to do them my own way is because I think a lot of trading, in general, is what you're comfortable with right like like keeping a, a good comfort level with the platform and the things you're using is super important because it's going to help you stay relaxed it's going to help you take the right trades it's just going to be better for your overall trading uh head and you know headspace and mentality and so with that i use thicker swim because those are what i've used when i since i began trading and so i'm the i'm the most used to analyzing thinkorswim charts like everybody's always like hey we use this platform and use that platform and i get it but thinkorswim charts are what i'm the most comfortable with they've what i've been analyzing charts with for years and years and so it'd be kind of a big switch for me to use a different charting software um yeah. and so that's the biggest reason why i, I, I kind of stick with it you know the reason why i stick with it is just the free commissions commissions would oh, be eating sure. away a large 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 portion of my profits Right. And I'm happy to uh, accept some of the quirks that go along with Think or Swim to be saving an extra like 30, 40 percent of my profit. Right. Because yeah. uh, commissions would kill me. I mean, they wouldn't like make me unprofitable, but it would take like literally 30 to like 50 percent of my profit on Sundays. Right, for sure. And, you know, zero commission trading is so much easier. It's so much easier, man. Like, oh, absolutely. I, I, like, on Think or Swim, like, the switch from what I traded on before to Think or Swim, like, I'm a scalper. And so scalping is so much easier on Think or Swim because you don't have that question in the back of your head saying, is this a net pr profit trade? Like, is this going to be net profit after commissions? Like, I don't have to think about that because I know whatever shows up on my PL, that's what I'm making. You know? Yeah, I love it. Except for the SEC and FINRA fees, but that's, like, pretty right. marginal. Oh, for sure. But yeah, What's I absolutely up? love uh, commission free. I abuse that. Like that alone changes my trading style. I think I would be trading a tiny bit differently if I had to deal with commissions. It wouldn't be like significantly different, but there's just some trades that I do right. take simply because I know I'm commission free. For like, sure. Yeah. Hundred percent, and and that's important for a scalper. I think too is understanding yeah. the trades. Uh, look at GTEC. It looks all right. GTEC showing up on the scanner. It's pulling a little bit of a red to green move. Volume's pretty light though, really. NTZ. And so yeah, I think, uh, let me see if it'll show up. Weird, man. Um, I know my gross P&L is more than $62 because it shows $136 is my net P&L. So my gross P&L has gotta be like 200 and something. Or no, my net PL's gotta be like one something. It's probably 200 and something. But for some reason, it's showing up as 62 here. This is my PL. You can see it right here. Um, 136.60. You know, so we are up to uh, $531 total in the challenge. So we're getting close. Yeah, it, it's great, isn't it, live gains? Like, people. Uh, like, it's really interesting switching to futures live games. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Did you see that exchange? And, uh, Y'all got free healthcare? healthcare? Yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. no zero, there's no zero, uh, zero commission brokers in Canada. And then the answer was, you all get free healthcare. Can't yeah. win them all. I, love I, I mean, and, and, and like, not to talk political, but like, I'm kind of like, there's two social programs that I'm for as a capitalist myself. Obviously, I'm a capitalist. I trade stocks every day. That's what I do for a living, um, you know, one way or another trading stocks. So obviously, I'm a capitalist. I own my own business, you know, but I'm, I'm somewhat for socialized healthcare and socialized education. Like those are two social policies that I'm somewhat for as a capitalist. And, you know, regardless of what your take on it is, team, I love you all. I don't want to start drama or like disagreements or whatever I'm saying. But, you know, those are the two that I'm okay with, you know. Uh, and I guess the reason for that is because my stepdad is uh, Canadian and I've been up there and I've been to the doctors and, you know, it's not as bad as people make it out to be. Uh, IB, yeah, I've heard, like, if I ever, I don't know, man, if I oh, ever man. hit... 005 is expensive. What? 
Uh, oh, yeah, that's drum. that. That's that's a lot. Yeah. 0. 0.05. Like I I know I looked whenever I was looking into going and doing um uh like switching to a platform that was faster for like better execution but charges commission. I was gonna get charged uh point zero zero two is what I was gonna yeah. be charged. Yeah, that's 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 high relative. It's high in, in the current market state where there's a lot of zero commission platforms. That's that's roughly ten dollars a round trip, and that if you take a thousand shares, and that's assuming that you don't uh, you don't scale in and out. You know what I mean? So that's 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 up there, especially relative to like Thinkorswim and Schwab and uh, E Trade, which are all zero commissions at this point. But yeah, like I, I just know that with whenever I was looking at it, uh, with tiered commissions, I would be paying like. 0 0.002 per share um and like at least that's manageable but um it still kind of sucks right yeah for sure 200 shares is a uh, dollar i mean yeah it's not too bad if you're trading small it's fine but i do think they have a limit with regard to like how big your account has to be you have to there's a minimum it's account how much size it's how many shares you trade a month is how right. uh it works right and i trade a lot of shares a month so it's uh that's why my commissions, I guess, are that much cheaper. Right. Higher education is not a right. It's a privilege. Oh, for sure. I, but I, at the same time, I think that the colleges, like, like we're basically being, uh, uh, what's the word? Um, we're basically being taken advantage of by the big colleges. Like, they're, you know, Dude, it's colleges so should not be 40 grand a semester. That's absolutely absurd. And if you think that's reasonable, then like you're shilling hard for the right. And I'm not saying you shouldn't be on the right or you shouldn't be on the left. I'm just saying like, that's not, that's unreasonable relative to the rest of the world. You know what I mean? And like, that's the difference. Like, like, you know, it, at a certain point, it, we're just being uh, manipulated by the big colleges. You know? As a, as a college student, like I, I kind of have like a more personal opinion on it. And it's of course it's biased because I'm a student paying for sure. the ridiculous tuition. Right. But like my, I, my perspective on this is that it's kind of messed up that colleges are for profit. Right. I think that like colleges should be a like not for profit organization. Right. Because you, you should be charging enough to be able to pay the teachers, pay the administration, right. be able to keep your maintenance on the schools, you know, like be, be able to pay everything. But should the like, should they be getting excess money and like right. on top of what they already need? Right. Like, I feel like that's just at that point, because like you want to make education accessible. For sure. And if you're doing it, making it for profit, then it's no longer as accessible. It's only accessible to people who already have wealth. Like right. at the end of the day, they could jack up the prices another ten thousand a month, and I could—I mean, not a month, uh, a year, like a per semester—and I right. could still probably like go to college, okay. and I would be fine. Right. But for some people, that would be like really, really difficult to like be able to manage that. You know, one hundred percent. That's like and, the average income of like people in the U.S. Like forty grand a year. Like that's like that's the median income of people here. Yeah. So like, it, it's it's um, I just crazy. think that yeah colleges shouldn't be for profit um it's a for bit sure. messed up and also with how much money they're charging i talked to one of my teachers and she was telling me that for like the semester she was getting paid like three thousand two hundred dollars for that class or something and i went back and looked at how much i asked her how many hours she spent a week and her hourly rate for how much work she was putting in to get how much she was getting paid was like 14 dollars an hour yeah i made whenever i was before i started trading i was working um at a chemical plant doing IT, I was getting paid fifteen dollars an hour, right. and she has a uh, like doctor college degree. degree course. Or, yeah, yeah, she or, has a doctor. She has like right. the highest education, and I was not even. All I had was a diploma, a high school diploma, and I was for making sure. more on an hourly rate than her. Yeah, and that's that's the issue. And, and I'm for teachers getting. Listen, my mom was a teacher. You know, like my mom is a retired teacher, and she got paid barely anything. Like we struggled. You know, as with my mom as a teacher. Um, and so I get teachers need to get paid 100%, but I think at a certain point, specifically the higher education market, it's just, it's a mess. And, and somebody else said, if the government controls it, it's going to be even bigger mess. And that's true. I think, I think at a certain point there, you know, there's going to be, um, there's going to be corruption with people, with humans, right? When humans control something, there's going to be corruption because humans are imperfect creatures, you know? Um, but at the same time, though, I think 40 grand a semester is, is taking it a little bit too far. And I, I, I kind of agree with Eric in that regard to where I'm OK with them charging something for it. But the current 
the current pricing for it is absolutely ridiculous and it's a very similar thing to healthcare as well like i get it like i'm a capitalist i trade stocks every day i'm pro business like i get it you know i'm i'm fiscally conservative in a lot of ways but higher education and healthcare are two that i think that it's just messed up right now you know um and, and i think that at a certain point we got to stop shilling for one side or another and realize that uh at a certain point there's a there's a line in the sand that it's just too much I think I saw something that said like uh, over the last like 20 or 50 years, um, college tuition has increased by like 80%, whereas wages have increased by like 8% or something like that. Right. And it's just like really, really weird. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, and mostly like I didn't graduate college, but I know so many people that are in debt from college right now still paid off. Like, like one of my close childhood friends graduated from LSU. And uh, she's still paying that off 10 years later. You know, that's too much, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's that's yeah. too much debt to take on, especially for, especially with how, like, shark-like the uh, student loan business is, you know? Yeah, I mean, you you can you can declare bankruptcy, but what doesn't go away is college right. debt. For sure. <laughs> you know, student <laughs> loans. Yeah. That, that, that doesn't, that's with you for life if you don't pay that off. I mean, luckily, I'm only... I'm only um, like 12 grand in debt and I'm no longer taking loans because my trading makes enough money to allow me to not have to take loans. Um, right. Which I'm like really grateful because if it weren't for trading, I would be taking more loans right now. But because I'm trading, I no longer have to take loans. So I'm able to start paying down my principal. Yeah, somebody else said, people make, or Austin said, people make a choice to get into that college debt though. Why should people... Uh, who didn't make that choice now have to pay for others. Um, what I'm saying though, I'm not even like, yes, like, because I think that if we have to pay for anything, higher education is one of those things. Like, I think if we have a, if we have to look at all our social programs and say, what is a reasonable enough expectation for our tax dollars to go to, as opposed to other things, I think higher education and healthcare are, are one of those things. I think that's one of the understandable things that I wouldn't mind spending my tax dollars on. Um, at the same time, though, I think that if you offer any college student a, a, a bunch of money like that, considering how young and naive some college students are, not all of them, but considering Wait, how and young also, and I want to add something to this. I, sorry. I, I, I was, like, I'll let you finish, but I just want to, like, oh, make no, sure, like, I don't forget what I was going to say. Sorry. No, uh, 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 all I was going to say is that if you offer that type of money to certain young naive college students they're always going to take it and it's not even like a fault it doesn't mean they're dumb it doesn't mean they're making the wrong decision it just means that they're young college students you know what i mean and like so you're it's going to affect them and, and so for that reason you know i think it's a little shark like uh, the higher education you know financial things um austin um colleges right now a lot of them are operating for profit if they take away their profit motive then they can decrease the price of like education without it increasing the cost to like taxpayers. Right. Like because right now they're making profit from schools. So if you if you take away the like and make the colleges operate at break even, then there is no longer going to be um, like there there's not there won't be like an increase to taxpayers. And then the other thing is, um, real quick, Jane Engineer asked uh, what I'm in school for. I'm studying cybersecurity. Um. The other thing is my school spends so much money on advertisement. Like, I think that's probably like one of the biggest things they spend money for. They're so focused on getting new students into the school. And they honestly sometimes neglect the students that are actually at the school. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. What's this YouTuber's name? Uh, uh, I'm Eric Green. Yeah. YouTube.com slash Eric Green. Yeah, check the description. Uh, we're, uh, we're trying to get to uh, a big enough subscriber benchmark that Chipotle will sponsor me. Yeah. So I can get <laughs> Chipotle. Because right now, I'm breaking the bank. Like, I, college uh, trading has helped me be able to afford college because I'm able to pay college now without taking student loans. But on the other hand, my bank is still being broken because of all my Chipotle money that I, like, I, I set aside, you know. 30% of that trading profit for Chipotle, you know? Gotta gotta get the Chipotle. So the sponsorship up. would save me a lot of money. <laughs> um, so yeah, so so like I said in the chat, just to just to, you know, make this very known and just to clarify a few things regardless of what your view is on this team I, I still love you all i appreciate the support i really do we can have opposing views and that's okay you know i think that's one of the worst parts of our current culture is that like people can't have opposing views and like anybody that does is just kind of 
nonsense is brought upon them. Like I said, regardless of what your stance is on this, you know, I still support you all, and I hope you guys do the same for me, and, you know, it is what it is. Uh, uh, in the end, though, it's just one of the things we can disagree on, and, and you know, that's okay. Um, like I said, I'm a capitalist. You know, I'm very, I'm almost 100% socially liberal, uh, but I'm also financially conservative uh, in a lot of ways as a capitalist, as somebody that runs his own business and does all this different stuff. Um, a good point, though, for, uh, for all of this is, like, one of the, like, a lot of times, like, programmers nowadays, they don't need to go to college. They can go to a boot camp. They can teach themselves. And if they get, if they become a proficient enough programmer, they can get a good job without going to college. And if they do go to college, they're going to get paid more and, and have an easier time follow, uh, finding jobs, certainly. But it's not a necessity at this point. And a lot of people that are wanting to be programmers learn to be programmers in six months. And within six months, you're getting paid 50K plus a year as a professional programmer, coder, whatever you want to call it. And, and you know, I think that it, it's not for, needed, but it kind of is like you can technically get a job in like programming without a degree. Right. But that is incredibly hard. Like, I bet if we go look at the people that are not working as software developers, like I, I would be, I, I don't know this for fact, but I would be willing to bet over 95% have degrees. And the reason why is because at this point, especially in tech, they always do. They're always asking about degrees and stuff. It's crazy, man. For sure. Like, I think they, that's all. People fun. put like so much weight on having a degree. Whereas I can tell you as an active college student, I haven't been in class. I haven't attended any of my classes now for well over a month. It's almost approaching two months. And I still have A's in all my classes, and it's because they're so easy. Like, like being in college doesn't mean anything in my opinion. Like having graduated, at least from like a normal college, if you're going to like an Ivy League or something, obviously that will carry more weight because the classes are a lot more um, like difficult probably. But like if you're just going to a generic college, it's always pretty pretty easy for the most part. Oh, for I mean, sure. it's well, there might be difficult classes. But like 80% of the stuff you're doing is just super like, it feels like high school all over again. Like I, that's why I don't go to class is I get bored. So I just go right. do other things with my time. Well, what I was gonna say though, is that I think that number's off. I, I, do, I certainly don't think it's 95%. I think that 10 years ago, 15 years ago, it was probably closer to 95%. But nowadays the, the culture of programming is cha changing. And as a programmer myself, uh, you don't need to go to college uh, to get a programming job. If you go to college, you're gonna have a way easier time finding a job and you're gonna get paid more off the bat. But I would say 20% of programmers nowadays have not been to college and probably, you know, uh, I think a majority of those that don't go to college go to what's called a coding boot camp and get certified as a programmer. You know, so, and so it looks these... like 76% of software developers have a bachelor degree or higher. So like, right. if you're trying to do it without a bachelor degree, you're at an extreme disadvantage. Oh, for I know sure. Both of my parents work in, my both of my parents, my okay, my stepdad and my mom manage, are both software developers and project managers and manage teams of 40 plus people. Like my mom works for the DoD and uh my dad works for my stepdad works for equifax nice. and uh they both were telling me like i because i didn't want to go to college i didn't want to because i've always thought college is stupid i've always thought education i don't think education is stupid but i think educational institutions are stupid because right. i know like i've always been able to learn more learning by myself than when i have like a stupid structured class where it's like certain benchmarks i don't right. know it's just way easier for me to learn myself so i was going to go and right. do this myself um but my parents because they're both like hiring all the time they told me no you have to go get a degree like for me it wasn't an option right. I, What's I, the standard? going to school was a hundred percent something i had to do right yeah, yeah. and i think the, well, the, sorry go ahead no go ahead you're good the, the, you can the only way you're going to be able to get like a job at least from what talking with my parents in like one of these industry like software because so, like software development uh or like en software engineering is so like there's so many people doing it now and there's so right. many brilliant people doing it for sure that the only way you're gonna get like even considered without having a degree is if you have an astonishing independent portfolio and i mean like right. astonishing 
Well, you what know? you do is, well, the way you actually get involved with it is, is like, so so the culture and program is actually changing, right? A lot of people are going to boot camps instead of college. And the reason they do that is because it's faster, right? You go to college, you're gonna have to go to college for four years to get a bachelor's. Yeah. With with a boot camp, you can become a certified programmer in six months. And you are gonna be, you know, I, I agree with you that you're gonna be at a severe disadvantage. But one of the beautiful things about the tech field is that you can go to a startup and a startup is gonna need a cheap programmer. And so you can get a job at a startup, there's a lot of different options for self-taught programmers as well as boot camp programmers. But the point is, is like if you go to college, obviously you're gonna get you're gonna make more and you're gonna have a way easier time finding a job. But as a boot camp graduate, you can certainly get a job uh, without going to college. And you know, even nowadays, like if you look at job postings for programmers, what you'll see is you'll see uh, you'll, you'll see bachelor's degree or related experience. And so a yeah, lot of five jobs, years related experience, right? But they're never going to stick you to that. Like they're never going to make yeah. you have five years. Like, of course they're going to say it because they want the best possible candidates. But the point is, is that specifically programming, not even tech in general, but like programming specifically is one of those things where the culture is swinging to be more of a cert instead of a degree. And I think that you, I think that a lot of people don't realize that anymore. And I think 10 years ago, especially, almost everybody went to college. But I think nowadays you have a large percentage of people that uh, just get their degree through a boot camp or to get a certification through a boot camp. And while they're gonna make much less, you know, you get one job, uh, you know, you're gonna have enough experience to apply for others. And it's gonna be a little bit more of a struggle to actually get the job done. But I think that you'll be able to find a job if you if you go to a boot camp. certainly. I, I, I do think that they are getting a little saturated though, for sure. Um... Yeah, and programming languages change all the time. Like for me, I know JavaScript, React, React, a little bit of React Native uh, for like mobile applications. But a lot of web dev, number one, even if you don't get a, a, an actual job, like if you work as a, a freelance developer for a year after you go to a boot camp and you get, you know, and you have a a resume of work that you can show, uh, you know, when you apply as an applicant, then I think you'll be able to, you know, a lot of the time what they do for programming applications is they they ask you a, a concept question or they just ask you a programming question and you know like they're gonna know if you know how to program based off of your answer to that question like if you don't know how to program and they ask you something you know yeah it's significantly difficult then they're gonna know whether you actually know how to program or not um, But with all that said, though, I'm still trying to get my college degree at 30 something, you know, so like uh, I think I think if, if, if it's an option for you, college degree is certainly the way to go, um, you know, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, Austin grew up. Uh, Austin actually knows my cousin or went to school with my cousin in Louisiana, in uh, Covington. Every time I see LA, I think Los Angeles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love <laughs> Especially LA when tech is by the name, you know? Right. Like when you think tech <laughs> and LA, it's like automatically like, oh, it's California. Right. Yeah, yeah. for sure. It, it, we get over, uh, you know, it goes LA. It's a common misunderstanding for sure. Yeah, I feel like that would probably get misinterpreted a lot. For sure. I, I don't think I'm the only one. Um, uh, I think Propane was asking me, I'm majoring in cybersecurity, though I have no intention of ending up working in cyber. It's like a it's like a plan B. It's like a backup for me. Yeah, I do a little bit of penetration testing, or I'm learning to be a penetration tester, which yeah. is like everybody's kind of dream. If you're a nerd, penetration testing is like... Uh, well, you think and, it's cool, and then you find out what it actually is, and you're like, wait, this isn't as cool as I thought. Oh, no, it is super, <laughs> it is super complicated, bro. Like, like yeah, people don't even yeah. understand. Uh, penetration testing, just to, just to explain it for those that don't know what we're talking about, penetration testing is ethical hacking, right? Yeah. It's basically going around and hacking into companies that ask for it to find holes in their defense and their security, and then you get paid a bounty for doing so, uh, is what penetration testing is. Um, it's a, it sounds great but it's extraordinarily it sucks, difficult. It's yeah. so much, dude. Yeah, uh, that's what I was gonna do for the longest time is I was gonna open up my own firm doing uh, pen testing. Right. But um, 
I realized that I don't really like cyber that much. I mean, I'm okay yeah. at it, but uh, trading is definitely where the passion's at. So if I can make enough money from trading, then I will certainly do trading that yeah. over that. Because right now, I'm not making a livable wage from trading. Like 24 grand a year around the area, like 20 to 24 to 30 grand pre-tax. Can't live off that. At least I don't think I could live off that. My, um, I don't live like super luxuriously or anything but even right. so um that seems like a little bit too little but if i can bump that up to uh 50 plus then right. i could work on it and continue upping the amount i make uh for until sure. it turns into something really cool right yeah and i think that's the plan that's that's the goal for a lot of us is just to try to make enough to live off of and then once we do that then we can you know focus on scaling yeah. up and doing better and you know and i still have a year and a half i have a year and a half until i graduate and I think, like right now, I'm estimating my odds of being able to make enough from trading by the time I graduate. I put above 65%. And the reason why is if I'm already doing, um, like, you know, one to $3,000 a month at the moment, I, it's not too far fetched to, th to think that I could get that from one to three to just say two to six. You right. know? And if I'm doing two to six a month, then that's a lot more money. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you yeah, have yeah. to be doing Kali Linux live. Games. Right. Like that's, was, that's uh, 100%. Like, yeah. You that's have standard. to be very familiar with all the tools and stuff. Yeah, yeah that's what I do. I use a VM, a VM machine, um, you know, virtual machine, and, and, you know, have my Kali Linux up there. And that's what I'm learning on, at least. But it's, it's interesting. There's a lot of different tools. And I think as time progresses with penetration testing, the tools are going to get better and better. And, and it's, you're going to have to relearn a lot of different things. And so I think similar to programming, pen testing is one of those things where you have to constantly evolve with it as opposed to just staying stagnant in what you learned originally as you got started. Um, yeah. I'm probably going to go ahead and close it down, though. I'm probably yeah, done Yeah, it's training. been pretty slow. I'm probably yeah. not going to... Just in case anybody uh, that does follow me is interested, I'm ending today. Well, I'm not ending. I, I might trade a little bit more. But at the moment, I'm currently planning on ending the day. $30 up today, $111 yesterday. So only up $140 for the week. But, uh, yeah, yep. you know, it's it's we're on pace. I can still hit right. my 500 a week goal easily. Um, yeah. Before we head out, by the way, well, hello there. Said, uh, who is he talking to? Hi, uh, well, hello, hello there. I'm Eric Green, and I day trade. I do scalping on small cap stocks. Um, Here, I just posted your link. Doing, yeah, there you go. Currently doing a a, a goal of like 500 a week, which I hit pretty consistently, and uh, looking to in the near future start breaking the thousand a week barrier, which would be ideal. That's that's the that's cool because if we're doing a thousand a week you know 52 right. grand a year pre-tax oh for sure it'll add up for sure um yeah if you guys uh before we close it down i posted eric's link in the chat so y'all go sub to his channel he's got a lot of dope content uh on his channel a lot of really uh educational beneficial content for traders so y'all go check him out uh you know we'll consider it a favor if you go sub to him um i'm also going to post the funded account link uh that i've talked about um before here's the link to top step if you want to be a part of it you can see i ran at 80 percent accuracy today in futures so killed it in the futures game only one trade in penny stocks up like 15 bucks which is fine uh on this challenge account which is what this is it's 136 dollars i'm still proving myself as a funded trader so hopefully i'll be able to get funded soon but the grind up is working in a very profitable day in futures the only loss do i took was 1250 so i'll take do you have that. a Webull affiliate link yeah i'll use your Webull affiliate link Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> here, I'll, I'm gonna, I'll do it right now. I'll do it right now. Okay. Yeah, I guess here. Uh, yeah, if y'all want to check out Weeble, you know, here's the link. I think I don't yeah, know I don't what see they're it in your description. Well, Where's no. So I, I, with, I, since I promote a bunch of different stuff, I just try to kind of limit it sometimes. But yeah. Uh, if you want to check out Weeble, I, I don't know what their deal is right now. There, it's always changing. I think it's you get two two free so stocks. If you sign up and deposit 100 bucks, I think you get two free stocks. But at the very least, you're going to get one free stock if you sign up for Weeble. It's got free paper trading, zero commission stock options trading, zero commission um, options trading. Like I said, a lot of fun stuff with Weeble. There's the link for that as well. Uh, yeah, it's delayed live gains. I don't know why. but uh, All right, let me let me quickly grab that Weeble link, put in the $100, and then, you know, get that, collect those two free stocks. I wonder what I'm going to get. 
right? Hey, I got I got AMT. I believe it was AMT one day. It was the most expensive stack. Or what? It was American Tower. Oh make me a deal. Make me a deal. Make me a deal. If we hit like a jackpot, I get half of your share. Deal? Like if we hit like a thousand or something. Come on. Huh? If oh, we hit out, a out jackpot. Of my free stock from you signing up. <laughs> deal. Hey, for deal. using your affiliate. Yeah. You for using affiliate. Because if we hit the jackpot, there we go. I'll make it. If it's over, if it's a, if it's a stock worth over fifty bucks, I'll give you half of it. Oh my God! Let's go. That yeah, would do be it. Like, hey. Next time I stream, next time I stream, you can do like a donation or something. Right. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, I'll, I'll sign up for it. Let's right. see what that happens. Yeah, it's in the chat. But yeah, guys, that's it for today. Oh, also, the World Series of Day Trading is coming back with Tefs and TradeNet. I won't be able to compete in it, but I figured some of you guys might want to be in it. The way it works is it's a completely free uh, competition. It's called the World Series of Day Trading. I did it last year. Uh, and so if you want to be on my team for it, it's completely free. You don't lose anything and the top 10 traders The way it works is they're gonna give you a, a challenge or a World Series account Basically a demo account and you're gonna trade on that for a week and the top 10 traders win free accounts So like win free accounts here. It's completely free regardless of how you feel about trade net or tefts It's completely free. It can't hurt you. You know, I don't let me think. let me interrupt you then for a brief minute Sure, there will only be nine spots because I'm gonna do it and then <laughs> okay yeah. Oh, well, no, no, no. I can, have an, I can have an unlimited amount of traders. Uh, so it, I don't have a limit. It's the top 10 traders. No, yeah, you're uh, saying top 10. So I'm going to be oh, number right. one. You're, you're <laughs> number one. <laughs> nice. Oh, well, no, if you're in, unfortunately, if you're in the U.S., you can't use it. I, I won't oh, even be able to compete. It's only overseas. They stopped accepting U.S. clients, unfortunately. Uh, all right, never yeah, mind. It there's 10 spots available again. Yeah. But here's the link. If you want to be on my team, there's the link for that. It starts, I think, November 3rd or 4th. So y'all go check that out, too. Um, but yeah, guys, I'm out of here. Hit that sub button. Hit that like button. Everybody, thank Eric for being here. Go sub to his channel. By the way, Link. brief update, $40, not $30. Hey, 40, <laughs> hey green is green, bro. Green there, is green. I just made another, I made another 10 bucks. If you look at the CBI, uh, CBLI, it just had a huge flush. And I was installing the Weeble. I was installing Weeble. And then I just looked up and I saw it flushed. And I was like, eh, I'm just going to take a position on it. I bought it. Right. And bam. Hey, green, green, bro. Quick, job, uh, man. Quick $10. Yeah. Yeah, you can't be in the U.S. That's what I'm saying, Austin. Yeah, no, no U.S. signups, only overseas. So if you're in Canada, Mexico, Europe, uh, you can. But if you're in the U.S., you can't. And I'll, I'll be a team leader, but I won't be able to actually compete. You know? um, Look at the U.S. again. More, we we got. Uh, we were talking about earlier the different things. That's that's an, so we may have free commissions, but you right. get to use Top Step Trader. You can't. For sure. Or no, uh, TradeNet. That's TradeNet. Or but trade yeah. Net. It, there's a lot of pros to being in the US. There's a lot of flaws, like he's saying. Like the PDT rule specifically sucks. But yeah, the, the PDT time, is the worst, dude. Oh my well, God. Well, people don't realize, like, it, it only sucks if you're a mid and high cap trader. Like, if you're not a mid and high cap trader and you don't need a short, I don't notice much different. I can trade 10, 15 times a day, you know? Yeah. And I mean, so, I'm, and, I'm above PDT and it still frustrates me that we have the PDT rule. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't affect me at all. Sure. But it still frustrates me. <laughs> like, 100%. Like, uh, yeah. It's, it's just a ridiculous rule, but, um, but yeah, guys, we're out of here. Good luck. We'll see you guys later. Peace.